you're late, but it's okay. I, hey, I said I was going to be late, therefore, I'm not late. That's how it works. You know what I feel like listening to? I feel like listening to the Yoshi's Island um, level select theme. That's what I feel like listening to. Alright. This is a minefield of silver, silver gunner right now. Alright, here we go. You guys don't know this? This is from Yoshi's Island. So, Windows decided to restart all by itself on, on my other computer, so I need to set up my Windows because um, that's just something that Windows likes to do. Isn't technology great? How's your Ash Joe? I don't get any complaints for anybody. Have to be back with Escrow Titanium. I have, a th I think, 15 names planned. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, even more than I thought. I have twenty names planned. You should have invested your points yesterday into suggestions. So much hate. Yeah, probably. I think yesterday uh, was probably a mistake, and we should have reloaded when we failed. But oh well, it was a funny moment. I'm only here for mono coins. It's not like I wanted to watch you or anything. Ba -ba -ba -ba. On the hype train's back. <sighs> Am I allowed to bitch about the hype train? Is this a, um, is this breaking terms of service? <laughs> I mean, I didn't have to sign anything new when they set up the fucking hype train. Can I turn it off? What's the issue with the hype train? Okay, well, first of all, it takes up a, a little too much, um, chat real estate. And secondly, I don't know, it feels kind of scummy. You know what I mean? Like, just breaking t t TOS all over the place today. I feel like... Twitch, Twitch is lucrative enough already and doesn't need this, you know, like, but mm, I guess, I guess some people might like it. Tell the corporation to not make more money because ethics. Uh, well, I know I like you're memeing, but I, I think there's, there are ethical ways to make a profit under capitalism. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Where are we going? Where's this heading? What arc are we into now? Hype train. Okay. The hype train has been disabled. No more hype trains. This is the last hype train, chat. Enjoy. This is the last hype train. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh... I, I, have a, I have a big announcement to make today. Big announcement. So, here it comes. I would like to announce that on the 29th of January of this, this month, this year, the 29th of January, mark your calendars, alright? You've all been waiting for this, I know. On the 29th of January, Monocoin turn-ins for a Yaya fund are worth double. There is a double bonus on the 29th of January. 20,000 coins cash in, actually worth 40,000. Mark it on your calendars, 29th of January. Not a troll. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. This is... <laughs> the January, <laughs> all amount of coin cash-ins are worth double, alright? 20,000 means 40,000 off the, off the, off the fund, alright? Uh, do best boys dream of best girls, by the way, Joe, you missed the, you missed kitchen and cafeteria. What? What did I miss? Aww. These are fantastic, you two. Thank you for doing this. Let's let's have that on, on like on big size right now actually, for uh, for the for the waifus. Pickle Nigido is 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 a waifu. I I approve of this. Double the results of waste redemption too. Exactly, yeah. Like if if you have twenty thousand coins and you and you cash them in, on on the 29th, then then yeah, that's that's forty thousand that that are spent not on Ayaya. So yeah. I bet Joe's not going to stream on the 20th. I'm planning to stream on the 20th, but I do have to say, uh, there's not going to be a stream on the 22nd. On the 22nd, there's no stream because... Uh, fuck you guys, I don't need to tell you. Uh, one of the kids needs a vaccination, so I'm taking them to get vaccinated. That happens quite a lot, actually. Ooh, look at 
look at Best Boy. I like the colors in this one. This is this is how much a, of an art critic I actually am. I like the colors. <laughs> These fan arts are as fantastic. Well, yeah, we're 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 blessed. We we don't deserve the fan art that we get. I mean, look, Q Q2 is obviously very talented, very talented, all right. But there there are tiers to the to the fan artists we have around here. You know, Q Q2 is really good, but you know he can't compare to this, all right. Like I think even Q2 will agree that there is there is there is a, a huge difference here. <laughs> With the SpongeBob, <laughs> this this is gonna stay on the screen, by the way, because, because I love it so much. It's so true. <laughs> Thank you, Q2. Let's get it down here. Pow pow pow! You scam me out of my twenty k. Hey hey, like. like you were just too too enthusiastic about about um, the Ayaya fund. When he will subscribe during the David Cage marathon, will you say something like "Thank you for repenting your crimes in the David Cage"? <sighs> You're locked up, trapped in the David Cage. Maybe that sounds like that sounds pretty fun to me. How does it feel that a silly thing, a silly little thing like Ayaya has now become a major part of the stream culture. I think it's pretty funny. I hope, I hope that it's, uh, it's not too scumbag of me, by the way. Like, I, I really do hope that, um, like, people aren't, like, so invested that they're like, I can't miss a stream because of Ayaya and I'm so engaged. Like, like, I hope, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's just, it's just a joke for, for most of us because I don't, I don't want to be, like, luring you back just because of the dumb Ayaya joke because it's never getting enabled, weebs. It's never happening. Which you keep forcing? What, what do I keep forcing? Sorry, I missed it. I gotta say, AI's best girls has to be enough. <laughs> Just looked at what the David Cage games were, and oh god, that's gonna be on a level on level of Danger I'm hype. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. Yep. I've played some of them before, though, so it's not gonna be completely blind. A streamer I watched named his channel points Pavlonian conditioning because that's pretty much what they are. Oh, our, our Pavla, Pavla conditioning is that whenever I type, um, everyone in chat thinks that I'm going to, uh, be playing a Yaya. Whenever I type, they, they've, they've learned that they might hear a Yaya afterwards. I don't know why. Like, it's, it's a really dumb thing. Like, it hardly ever happens. So, yeah, you'll, you'll notice that. Okay, so let's go hand in the stuff with Evert, and then I'll say thank you to people, and then we'll go down and explore the new area. I think we should go do that first. Maybe we can get our gun back. Any idea what game is after Disco Inchisium? Uh, probably one of the promised ones. Because I think Disco Elysium is going to last us until Witcher video is out. But we'll see. I'm having I'm having a lot of trouble with it. But I think we're not even a quarter of the way done this game. So we'll see. Maybe we're a lot closer to the end than I think. And then we'll have to have another game. But maybe we'll just play like some roguelikes for a bit. Kind of feel bad for watching if it causes so much trouble. That no, not this. This this is this is difficult on me, but um, like it's fine. Like I'm enjoying it. It's just it's just a it's a good time, but it's a stressful time, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but no, the, the video is causing a lot of trouble. How did I come from there? Yeah, I came I came from there, but yeah, don't feel bad about it. As Eminem says, that's just the way it is. Slay Spire just released a new a new character protagonist. Yeah, I feel like I'm too much of a brainlet to play it looks complicated to me. Didn't we have some dirt on Leo? Oh, hey, mister. I need to be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And a lot of folks really did keep coming back. You mentioned wanting to play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines on your portal vod. Did you ever get around to it? Nope, that's one of the Promise games we're going to be playing that soon. When, when Witcher's done, we're playing David Cage games, Vampire the Masquerade, Yakuza 0, Deltarune, um, and Ace Attorney, and maybe there's one more I'm forgetting. That's what we're gonna play. Uh, why does the Make Me Dab prize get progressively more expensive? Um, well, because the Dab prize involves me calling Lily upstairs, and I don't want it to be too, too cheap to interrupt whatever Lily is doing downstairs while the streams are going on, like she's looking after the kids. Um, but also, I felt like there were too many too many cash-ins that were around 20,000. I wouldn't be completely against reducing it to 30,000 though, but it's a, it's a joke. It's a, it's a joke cash and They're all jokes. None of them are serious. <laughs> Let's hope that 2020 is the year Silk Song releases. Yeah, uh, the the year's pretty stacked. Um, I was thinking about that yesterday. I didn't realize how stacked the year is. Like, I completely forgot about The Last of Us 2. I'm like, oh shit, that's coming out. You know? Like, oh man. Like, an Elden Ring might be coming out too. Like, 
it's it's not confirmed, but yeah, it might be. Like yeah, uh, all like Persona Five Royal, Persona Five Strikers. Like yeah. Are you Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? Oh yes, yes. He replies excitedly. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What a, what was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. The little guy chuckles merrily. It's very, very good. It makes a man feel so warm and happy. He shakes his head with a wide smile. I feel like I could take on Mr. Runadin's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. What do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Is this like is this like a a um a clue? It's gonna tie into the murder. Yes, yes, I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Uh, makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling and rags. Hold up, who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what, what we speak. He's from Grad. Something is off about this borscht. I'm going to look into it. Oh, sure, Mr. Sure. The little guy nods. Yes, do that. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm off. I'm kind of watching the Persona VODs. Damn, you really hate Yusuke at the start since you see the contrast between them. Now. Yeah, I really don't. I really dislike Yusuke. I, like, I dislike most of the characters when they first show up, and then I like them later. I didn't like Haru when she first showed up either. And now she's best girl. I like, I think I like Kafumi right away though. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time since you're already sat on that chair. What? Remember the container I asked you about? Turns out there's a mega rich light bending guy inside. Mega rich light bending guy. Oh my god, how did that get in there? He's so rich he could get in anywhere. Slime like him must have oozed in through the cracks. He must have been in the container when someone accidentally closed the door. He's so rich he could get in anywhere. Damn it to hell, Harry. He climbs this on the table. I specifically told my guys to check all the containers for mega rich light bending guys. Nothing can stop an innov innovative mind. I think he wants to take down the proletariat, Everett. Kim, tell him he was there. There was a guy in the container, Lieutenant says slowly, but he didn't bend any light. There was That was in the, in the detective's head. Honestly, guys, we might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this harbor, but I won't be caught transporting the light-bending mega-rich. He shakes his head. I have a, I have reputation to protect. Yes, for God's sake, you're, you're a socialist. The mega rich are people too. He was not. He was a nice man. Gave me stock tips. Yes, the transportation of the mega rich should be more tightly regulated. Didn't seem like he was safe. You should be honored by the presence of this magus. He was a. Uh, he was of half Revachalian blood, and amassed his wealth using the mysterious bond of nationhood. Uh, let's go number two. No, they're not. He smells brightly. They're vermin, and one just. One just found a way inside my container. Soon he'll bring the others, all three of them. Thank you for telling me. I'll see to this immediately. What are the, the four capitalists of the apocalypse? Like what? He bursts out laughing. I shudder to think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. Not for one per one, one second did he believe there's an actual mega rich person somewhere in his, contain in his container town. Damn, thank you, drama. Open door, you asked me. Can we discuss the murder now? Oh, nice. I'm very glad to hear that, Harry, he says with a smile. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? He's trying to figure out if you're lying. <laughs> oh no, we have to lie anyway. I may have gone inside and seen a collection of racist mugs. I did go inside. Weasel had the flag of the old Revachal on his wall. The deal wasn't for me to go inside, so I didn't. You're right, Harry. You only had to unlock the door. He gives you a clever look, which you did, so we're all good here. He was testing you, and you succeeded. Damn, we lied. Let's get down to brass tacks to defeat the Huns. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. He pretends to roll up his sleeves. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. There was a collection of colonial mugs there, and I found... <laughs> I heard about the connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. Uh, by now, I'm sure you figured out who the dead man was work, who the dead man was working for. The bad guys, Wild Pine, and Sentascaris. Another violent measure of the top hats against the flat caps. I'm listening. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the, shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? He nods gravely, a security contractor. Can you imagine that? Worker stra stranding, sorry, standing in peaceful protest. Maybe I need to go put my contacts in. United in the spirit of fellowship. 
and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire, making us commit suicide. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yasut, Seminine, Sarah Marisa, you name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Sen Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachal into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Hold on, you have a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village, but the marks and the brutality are very real. Go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. He laughs. Wait, they move the container? Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. His face turned serious. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. He shakes his head. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, he says, ignoring the lieutenant. What you need to realize is... We dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, he raises his finger. We push to kill. Wait, the whole neighborhood is in on it? Potentially, Harry. Potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rowing club people, ex-coal miners, witchers, tough guys. I'm all ready to spring into action for their home base. Who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the union. A group of lay a people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. They're like you guys, he nods to you and the lieutenant, idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen, and if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victim. Mm-hmm. 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 One day, Titus Hardy... He, leader of the peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. He chuckles. I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried you might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martinez boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in, he chuckles. Besides, I sent, sent, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. He places a lot of faith in that lawyer girl. Perhaps this is a tactical error. Anyway, there was a collection of colonial monks. <laughs> no, we're not doing... Yusuke, no, no. How do you know the mercenaries were hired by the, by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. He slams his fist on the desk. That's their MO. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in, sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' rights to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs are organized by the security contractor? You said it, hell. The fist slams on the desk again. One of these guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. The name of the company is, is Krennel this time. It might have been Sediment before. Another question. Um, yeah, let's give him that information. Of course, you're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in the position because people like me. Sorry, in this position. You mentioned a lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one. He grins broadly. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Oh, man, that's a shame. That's a real shame. She doesn't understand the economy anymore. Tell me about Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them, exemplary union members. Yeah, sure, seven. Always working to advance their position in the local socia socialist d democratic movement. Core members. This is like some Snow White thing. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. He starts laughing. Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're all... They're almost all of them. They are almost all of them great guys born leaders. Okay, makes sense. Kind of weird, though. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachal in mind. Work with them, hell, interview them, but don't fight them. They really are just like you, men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Everard, I've met these hardies. Can you ask them to cooperate with me? But of course, it's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. You can now go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. 
Also, Harry, here's five real. He holds out a banknote. Wait, why are you giving it to me? I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. I don't need it. I only wanted you to help me with the Hardy Boys. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you. Just holding it out there. He pockets the bill, but I am willing to share information. Was there anything else? Good talk. Let's conclude for now. Was it a good talk? He leans back, suddenly worried. I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want, want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like M Mr. Martinez, and of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. Great sadness comes over him, but it's like I can't completely trust you yet. Yet? Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if I know you're not a man of the left. Sorry, if you're not a man of the, of, of the left. He says, slowly shaking his head, I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left? So you have to be a social democrat. No! My ability to understand the economy. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. I'm not a man of the left. I'm a patriot of Revachal. You're right. You're right not to trust me. I take care of. I take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. What's that supposed to mean? I'm more left than you are. This is another corrupt scheme, isn't it? I'm neither left nor right. I do what my heart tells me to do. <laughs> All right, so two is amazing, but that's definitely not us. Um, we're not a patriot, so I don't think we're left. I think I think we're a dirty, dirty centrist. We're a dirty, dirty centrist. What does your heart tell you about your lost gun, Harry? Does it tell you to forget about it, or do you think it wants to be found? He picks something from his teeth. I think it's lonely and cold. I think it wants to be found, and I have a proposal for you. What would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, he pulls out an envelope, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Kim, what do you think of this? It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. He studies Everett, but he thinks it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. He bows his head in shame, then looks up and smiles. But once we, we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin Ace and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. We already know who it is. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting th things. What are the signatures for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The union is going to build a modern youth center in Martin Ace. He grins broadly. It will be righteous. We're going to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. And on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. Where is this place exactly? On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it, a gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. What will happen to the current occupants? They're just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Mar Maris, or Maurice. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the streets? Are you 100% sure no one's going to end up homeless? Am I? The big man shakes his head in disbelief. Harry, these people, Martinez is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're going to build a youth center there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people, not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, not just the harbor. He means it. Ooh, really? 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 Empathy, can you be wrong? Um... No, I don't like this. But then, do we trust empathy? Like, empathy is saying he means it, so if he means it, then yeah, okay. But maybe there's a lie in there that we, that we, hmm. I don't like this, I'm going no. No, I'm not going to do this. Perfectly acceptable, he smiles. No one's going to force you into anything, but I don't know about that gun of yours. You see, I'm a vengeful man, Harry. Part of how I got where I am is that, well, I can be quite nasty sometimes. But the good news is, the moment you change your mind and want to look into this matter, just please tell me. Just tell me, and we'll be buddies again, he smiles pleasantly. The lieutenant's eyes meet yours, and he shrugs. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, can we go over details of the murder again? No, we did that already. All right, I'm looking into your shady brew. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. He reconsiders. Just one thing, if you, if you can, make it even shadier. He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. He doesn't care either. See you soon, De Bardur. The big man raises his hand in farewell. Just kidding, but not too much. Alright. Kim's whole personality is okay, fine. Yeah, kinda. 
Okay, this is not done yet. All right, so how many skill points do we have? We have one. All right, so we want to level something up or... Oh, let's let's level up Esprit de Corps again and see if we can finally get... Intimidate that guy. Let's go. We're doing it. Spoilers, we are not actually doing it. Maybe get authority for Titus, guy. Please level up authority. Mm. We can try that again, sure. Someone is saying that suggestion is the best one. Is this the guy that the old lady was talking about? Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, uh, man, me and narcotics go way back. He folds his hands behind his head and leans back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But he pauses, letting the memory dissipate. Those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Do you finance those other addictions with drug trafficking? I need to get high and I'm looking for a dealer. Let me straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. Lieutenant steps in. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bulk shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's, it's headed toward a conflagration. Wait, then why are you still hanging around? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look too, don't look kindly on missing cargo, and it gives me time to work on my rhymes. And work on your website. A rhymesmith? This is quite credible. It goes with his cadence and way of speaking. Why do you th who do you think could be conducting the drug trade then? Wow, my reading is even worse than usual today. Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachal. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. How's it going, Lily? Okay. I wasn't sure what you wanted, so I brought you everything. You brought me a tea and a water and a diet sprite. All right, thank you. So if you drink them all, you'll have to pee a lot. But if you I'm don't probably want not them, good. then don't I, drink I'm them. I'm probably all. just gonna drink the water and and the uh, and the tea. Do you want to give out some claw fists while you're here? Sure. Okay. And last but not least, Docro bins for 18 months. How did you ever think you were going to ha gonna have the video done by Christmas? You're insane. Also, love you, Kappa Pride. Office. Well, I the video has um ha, has been in different stages of I'm sure it's going to be this long and then it isn't. So you know, um at one point I thought the video was only going to be four hours long and just the Witcher one part is four hours long. So that's that's why it's always been like oh I think I think I'm close and then it's like oh I'm not. So that's why. So many claw fists. Yeah, a lot of claw fists. So many claw fists. Okay, see you guys later. Thank you for fisting, Lily. <laughs> You're welcome. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. Conceptualization, formidable. He's a poet, hit him with your best verse. Understood his theatrics, art is everywhere. All right, 97, there's no way we can lose. Hey guys, how's it going? Your best verse. You don't even have a bad verse in here. Just tumbleweed and liquor stains. Wait, no, what are you doing? She broke me, she fucking broke me. That's brutal, man, but you know, time will... No, stop, he, he's already mortified. <laughs> no, Tommy, these, these are my rhymes, listen. She fucked me till I bled. That's, um... <laughs> In the name of God, what are you doing? It's not real, guys. It's not my actual thoughts. It's a poem. I will never be the same again. She's always there. Fuck the case. Fuck everything. Total doom. It's the poem. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And it's cool, but I will never be the same again. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know what to say, so he just repeats. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Those are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust or honest, so thanks, man. He's not lying. He likes the end. <laughs> How the fuck did we just lose a 97% check? Yes, and also thank you for stopping. He looks at you. We have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? Oh, man. Oh, man. Let me tell you something about you guys. Let me tell you, tell you guys something about me. 
that I've never said before. I'm I'm literally Nagito in real life. Looking for something. It's all coming out. What was that argument about? It's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of races he spits on the ground. Not the most popular topic nowadays with the coalition in, ch in charge and all. You might want to change the topic, that is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. I get it, someone has to be the unpopular guy. Oh, so you're just a racist, makes sense. I'm not just racist. <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> look, I've read books. He gestures with his cigarette for emphasis. The science of racial theory has all been proved, even if uh, some people don't want to accept it. So this is like what, Stefan Molyneux or whatever the fuck his name is? People who study these things say that you and me are superior by design. He glances at Kim. So naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Race is simplest is a simplistic means of social classification based on easily observed attributes, hunches, and pseudoscience. You just look at people and make arbitrary judgments. Okay, what else have you thought up? Yes, I can't, I can really tell you're a prime example of superior design. Right, I've already made up my mind. Want to hear it? Jump ahead. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Lieutenant tries to remain impassive, but the slight arch of his eyebrow tells you that he's liking it. And ar as arbitrary as any judgment, that doesn't make it less of a fact. We all have to use facts. Once you accept it, you'll gain clarity of understanding. Okay, what else have you thought up? So lately, we Ocidentals have experienced an unfortunate downturn. When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. Yeah, what's the problem with that? The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the mosquitoes. Oh, man! Oh, that's actually pretty clever. He throws a sharp, by the game, not by him, he throws a sharp glance at Lieutenant Kitsuragi and other the other intruder species too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Cultural victory? What is this? Oh, you, uh, conceptualization? You just embarrassed us in front of, like, cool lorry driver man, all right? Like, fuck off. What, wait, what's this cultural victory? It's when, it's when you expand your borders really high in, in civilization. It's what the kips of Boogie Street are going for right under our noses and the others too on the radio. Heard of ch any Chansons lately? Heard any Matetos or Lighter? Leader? No, dominating culture is how they plan to win. They say so themselves. Uh-huh. It's true, he pushes on. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birthplace. You might, uh, might end up with a new subrace with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you got to control the offspring. Yeah, I think I can get down with racism. <laughs> yeah, I'm not down with this. Why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> don't push your luck, run. The man gives you a disgusted look and turns attention elsewhere, ignoring your presence. <laughs> Looking for something, aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? You said something about the rights and privileges of lorry men. Yeah, they're a big deal. My great grandfather was a carter, had a royal license and everything. We tried to hold on to our privileges. Hold on, what's a carter? What's a carter with you? Someone with a cart. What did you think it was? That's how deep in, into history our thing reaches before machines. And that's a privilege? Sure fucking is. We have a guild and everything. Very ancient, very prestigious, very mysterious. So you're in a carter's guild? Goddamn right, they've been trying to fuck us out of our heritage in the name of profits, but when they try to replace us, they'll regret it. Trusting street thugs with their goods is going to fuck them right up the ass, mark my words, generations of practice ain't no laughing matter. Don't bring up ass in front of the ass eaters, you're lorry, you're, you're lorry men, right? What's your stance on drugs? I feel like there should be an ah uh, there. Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let any anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on his cigarette. You smell of booze and narcotics. What's different about narcotics? Sorry, you smell of booze and cigarettes. What's different about narcotics? You know where that shit comes from? Sa Sa it's He doesn't like drugs because they're racist? Sarah Marisa, Safri, Ilamara, they take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial economic sabotage. Perhaps it's good to agree to get him talking. Hold on, but they make al -Ghul alcohol in Ilmar too. I was told they do. So I take it you're not smuggling drugs out of Martinez. Listen, I agree. It's our responsibility to keep that, that this poison off the streets of Revishal, right? Yeah, let's go with that one. He eyes you warily, unsure how to, how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds then. Damn, it didn't work. You should have signaled you're a nationalist before. I don't know shit. If I, if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Puss on a cigarette. Then why are you still hanging around here for? What are you still hanging around here for? Most other... Cameo camioners have left. What do you think? I can't leave the lorry unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's it's those little kips sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like like ass cancer. 
There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of the big lorry nearby. I did see one lorry with the trailer doors open on my way here. Do you know what happened? Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved his country. We were having a good debate about genetics. <laughs> At the whirling in rags when some kip boy smashed his lock and took down near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. He takes a long suck on his cigarette, appearing to savor the taste. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. If they were getting drunk inside the whirling in rags, how could they know who broke into the lorry? If all, if you were all, if you all were at the whirling, how do you know it was Kips who broke into the lorry? What, aren't we allowed to say it's that it's the Kips who do all the stealing around here? It's not rotor science, man. If it's not you, then who's running drugs through Terminal B? Is it obvious? Fucking Sai Lang, that beady-eyed South Samaritan. He spits on the ground. His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. The one reselling humanitarian aid packages, right? That's the one. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. The Loryman takes a slow, satisfied drag and blows a smoke ring. He's your man, alright. 100%. He's a Loryman selling... Loryman selling his employer's stuff. Broke the seals on his human oxaloid. No doubt he's selling drugs too. People like this just make me sad. Like, not, not just sad that they exist. I, I, feel, I feel sad for them too. Like, it, it's such a... It's such a scary ideology. I wouldn't be so sure about it, not until we've heard what Siling himself has to say. Guess we need to pay Siling a visit then. Guess so. Alright. Can we buy his speakers first? Ooh. Alright, do we want them? Do we want to spend 50 real on the speakers and the sneakers? Fuck it, we're doing it. Super cool, now the premium lifestyle is yours, officer. Okay, now let me buy the speakers. The junk is yours, officer. The street vendor hands you the speakers. Happy listening. Try not to hurt your ears with that Samaritan garbage. All right. We're never taking these off, right? The Ultra Series Fallen Sneakers put lightness and grip above all else. With grip tape covered springboard soles and ultralight synth fabric technology, you can exit every corner with the maximum traction of a gentleman's racer. Reaction speed, limitless grip, hand-eye coordination, steady ground, encyclopedia, too fast for facts. Aw, oh, damn. We're like, like full-on Sonic now. Why did you even buy those? There are no magic. These are no magic speakers. They are lame. These are lame speakers. All they ever produce is a faint memory of the song you're trying to listen to. Sell them for cash. Oh, they're worth more than what we bought them for. That's kind of weird. Uh, can we use them to um to uh to plug them into the thing in our room? What's this over here? The shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. Okay, so this is a bug. It shouldn't be. A it shouldn't be active. Active. Okay. You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. Composure. Find something worth salvaging from that from that pile of rags. Yeah, sure. Now we roll six and a four. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker surface says, but also wind. Some are one hundred percent waterproof and sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty, and it's only four fifty for you, sir. Hmm. Composure, but sh <laughs> shivers are down because it's waterproof. Everything's still cool here, officer. So, Siling, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? For a moment, he's unsure how to respond. I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs are in lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course, in which case drugs are excellent. He kisses his fingers. Tasty, tasty drugs. I'm super into drugs. That's very cool. A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale or at my home or on my person, he smiles. Sir, it appears to be true. No drugs in sight. Not in the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. I actually don't like drugs. That's cool, especially after you already said you're into them. <laughs> like all the coolest detectives are <laughs> these two drugs <laughs> and are very conflicted about it. Still no drugs here, he smiles. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler, you, you investigating that, that and all, but he points to the goods. I am not a lorry driver, I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. A blatant lie, sire, that he tells it with such conviction. We'd better, we'd believe him. We'd believe him if we didn't know better, but you are a lorry man. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver. No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm, he stops to think, realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. <laughs> That's not my most important thing. That's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. He spreads his arms. So you forgot to tell me. So you were embarrassed to tell me. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Siling, my source tells me you're the one transporting drugs for, for the union. 
Nothing, I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. He doesn't want to talk about them. He's afraid. Who are you afraid of, Siling? It wasn't the drug crowd. Tell me now. Let's go with afraid. Look, he looks around and lowers his voice. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. If you don't want to... If you don't want to get into this mess, raise your voice. You have to give us a reason to move on. Um, Alright. Let's be bad cop. It's a she, okay? He, he whispers. The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, he shakes his head. She's no lady. Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy boys? Who are these other drivers who talk? Is the lady driver the old woman back there? Point, point to the pale driver, dazed out, strange. Could she be associated with the Hardy boys? Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all. I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other or the other one with the tattoos? He points north. All of them, even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who, who has tattoos. I don't know. Maybe if she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. It could be. She was strange. He's not ruling her out. Could she be associated with the Hardy Boys? I don't know. I'm not a local. I don't know anything about that. Okay. We're cool now. Conclude. All right. He snaps back to his usual self. Ice cold. Let's cap this off by a purchase. Cap this off by a purchase? You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detectives, detectives of both of you. You deserve it. Damn. I, want, I wish we could buy Kim a present. Did we ever go over here? You can buy a board game and play it with Kim at the bookstore? No way. I don't believe you. You're giving me hope. Oh, we can we can call the um, the police and see what they have the information about the boots. Oh, she hasn't heard back yet. Okay. Loman, you caught me at an opportune moment. This awful weather gives me away. You can entertain me with your questions. All right, are you the lady driver? Do you just call me a lady, Zarif? She clearly doesn't think she's a lady. Don't repeat that. Well, aren't you a lady? I was told of a woman driver. You're the only woman here. I'm not that either, Zarif. Her smile dissipates. I've gone too far from it all to remember what what was between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. So you're not the driver everyone is terrified of. I'm only terrifying of small children and to those who used to know me. Yeah, it's not her. Believe me. Why are you scary to the people who used to know you? because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. You said long haul, that's the big ones, the tracks. There's no women and men there. It's, just, it's all just she hums along as if to a track on repeat. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people where they want to stay. In the background, a quiet song seeps from her cabin into the air. You don't hear any vocals. Then who is the female driver I was told of? How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other camiononeers? Camiononeers? Camioners sniff sniffing around when I have my movies to go to and working on my website. Oh, Sim, the woman stares at you, her mind elsewhere now on other matters. Something in her is pulling towards some unknown rest state. She twitches like a sleep kick. Cool line. The board game thing is true. Okay, we'll go get the board game. All right, don't think I don't, don't say I never do anything for you, chat. We'll go and do the board game. Did we exhaust all the dialogue with this guy? Went native on the chief, huh? Those ballerina antics were reckless. Should have just punched him in the throat again. Let's talk about our right to work. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down? Good, we're fighting for- Besides, we're not that different. It helps the people- Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed you, piece of shit. He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, scub. The loitering man hollers in return. What is a strike? Who are all these strike breakers? Look around. What exactly is your goal here? When a bunch of ungrateful lazy cockroaches can't get their act together and decide to, to block honest work for other people, he shifts uncomfortably in his workers' overalls. What do the strikers want? Beats me. They mumble nonsense about boardrooms and workers' rights. While we, he raises his fist and starts shouting again, have the right to work. Who are all these strike breakers? Look around. Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. The man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in a in time of crisis. 
If union fucks don't want to work, they ought to let in those who do want work. I have a question. The lieutenant looks him in the eye. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No, they follow the rules of the market, the rules of the economy, because they were, he starts bellowing, given a job to do. What exactly is your goal here? We were promised work, he points to the gates. We'd be in there working if the bastards hadn't shut the gates and you are unable to breach the entrance. Main gates locked, would take heavy ordnance to bust it open. Could try to get in through the secretary's office, he points up the stairs, doors locked, the guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mesca punk either, he points to the dock worker idling on the staircase, I mean head measurer or whatever it is. Wait, you can't get by measure head? But I got to by measure head, I kicked him in the face. Yeah, I saw your ballerina moves up there, the man spits out a yellow clot. In a real fight, these acrobatics will get you killed faster than a bullet. You caught him off guard. That only happens once. Now he's alert, standing on a narrow bridge, and my men are tired and hungry. Have you considered storming in, like all of you? Why don't you go arrest them instead? I'm sure they've done plenty of criminal shit. They have th that look. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home, at least for now, if you can't get in anyway. No, they will give up eventually, or get drunk, leave the button unguarded. Then we charge. The man rubs his jaw, a perfect, lightly bearded square wedge. I'm going to leave now. Lonesome long way home. Ooh. Here we go. Oh, nice, it raised our perception. Cool. Here we go, home awaits. Walk past station 41 and through the market, past the Boogie Street spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district, then past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the, ooh, it's linking together. It's all coming together. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees, a small house, no larger than a matchbox, 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone, and so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Speed gives one sigh. But we don't take any any like drugs or anything like that. Alright, so do we want to level up perception? I really like having perception. Let's level up perception. We're leveled up perception. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Alright, did we miss anything around here? Like, we, we looked at this, right? Is there something new to do here? Go to the body of the fridge now. Yeah, that's what we're going to do with the new perception. Then we'll go get the board game. Then we'll go in and talk to them. And then we'll go explore the new area. No. Our physical instrument's too low. Okay, is there anything that we have that can raise our perception? 28%. God damn, man. God damn. A flashlight will raise our perception, right? Like, secretly. Secretly raises our perception. Alright, so it looks like there's nothing that's raising our perception. But I'm sure there's something that, that does, right? No. Wow. Really? Nothing that raises our perception. Holy shit. Alright, well. 20%. Nope. We're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to get it again. We need to level up again. We're almost there. We're so unlucky. So unlucky. Should have bought glasses. Yeah, it's true. Maybe I should be buying more more stuff to in order to have the option to uh, increase my um, uh, my skills. I'm not sure I feel about micromanaging all that though. You have money to so buy everything. Yeah, but there's there's something in uh in the pawn shop that's 500. So maybe we need to save it up. Hey, Dad. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. Burrito. It's okay. Just try not to let it happen again. All right. Uh, I want to get a book so we can read something at night too. What book should we get? We can get that book. We should get a detective book. Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen dies? Oh no, turns out he faked it to solve a case. Are there any more? Yes, there's also the dame who did it. Farewell, farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. Come on, this is not the, the way real police solve crimes. The real police are some 20 kilometers away sitting in an armored motor carriage. A bald man turns toward a lean man and pats him on the back. Come on, Chester, tell me the story again. What? Mac Torson, Chester McLean, again? Man, I tell that one, I tell that one 
at least once a month. It's not that interesting, Chester replies. The fuck it is, the bald man replies, and these guys haven't heard it. He motions to the civilian sitting in the back seat. You see Chester here. He pokes his finger at the lean man. Chester faked his own death once. Gosh, why? One civilian looks on amazed. The bald man bells a reply. A very fucking dangerous case. Isn't that right, Chester? They almost got you that time. Yeah. Sure came close, Chester mutters in return, then turns to the rapt listener. Alright, so I was tailing this guy called Francis the Shoe. The inside of the motor carriage is thick with cigarette smoke, outside it starts to rain. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to one question that matters. To the one question that matters, who is Dick, Dick Mullen? Reaction speed, who is Dick Mullen? Oh wow, I didn't I didn't know you could succeed on these checks. Your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of the spine of a book. The title reads Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? Mistaken Identity. A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic Hard Boiled Face. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Hmm, why does this speak to me? Could be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals. That's probably right. I'm a complicated guy, full of contradictions. Then this is the book for you. Shopkeep! I wish to buy this Dick Mullen novel. Hmm, of course. She shudders. Such a, such violence and immorality. Uh, I mean, enjoy. Alright. Alright. So, we can read this later, right? We're looking for a board game. Are they here? Alright, do we- This is the only board game? Lousy Aura is there, she shudders. No role-playing games. No, role-playing games are popular among the, those types, you know, who who are into those kinds of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. Look through the world-related items. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices. Codices? Codice, codices? Litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium 2nd Edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art. The Hunters of Katok Boreal Creature Compendium and a Pick Your Path Adventure game book titled Tales of Witcher, Cavern of Velcrag. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books exactly? Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says World 3rd Edition Mega Setting, Mega Setting Supplements Module. Side panel notes, a fant fantastic adventure board game. New maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. <sighs> that price is steep, but then it's 3rd Edition Mega Setting, setting Supplement, so it makes sense. Alright, alright. Whole new which board game to play with Kim? Uh, Sue's. Oh, you can't play We're All? Oh, you can't play. You can only play the Sue's Ranty one? I'm deleting the poll. Both? What do you mean both? Alright. A civilization building board game where you get to choose a nation and set off to colonize. Colonialize and exploit other cultures. A star-shaped note on the box proclaims that the game now includes a completely new genocide option. Nice. In your hands, you hold a brand new copy of the game Suzerainty. Suzerainty. It's snugly wrapped in a skin of plastic. The cover features a charming illustration depicting a mass of grinning laborers loading goods onto a ship which, while a richly dressed administrator oversees their work. The exact location and time period are left deliberately vague, but it's clearly meant <laughs> it's clearly meant to represent the eco economic relationship between the Revachalian suzerainty and its many vassals. Shake the box. The box has a nice heft to it. You hear the rattle of individual wooden tokens and feel their weight shifting back and forth. What treasures wait in store for you? Even before you open it, you can tell this will be a meaty game of grand strategy and complex player interactions. Remove the plastic wrap. The plastic wrap. The plastic wrap rips off as easily as a, a as a bodice in a tawdry historical romance. Open the box. There's a hiss as the lid slides off. Inside, you find a thick, full-color rule book and more than a dozen pouches of various wooden components. Ah, savor that new board game smell. A mix of wood, paper, and ink, all wrapped in the sweet must of cardboard. Read the rule book. <sighs> Welcome to Suzerainty, a game of economic strategy for the whole family. The rule book is sumptuously illustrated and thick as a gradient novel. Economic strategy, more like rapacious plunder and exploitation. Is this Monopoly? Finally, a proper game to teach children about the importance of trade in the global economy. Hmm, this history seems problematic, but it is important to teach children basic economic concepts. 
The colorful illustrations depict cheerful, cheerful workers picking apricots, hauling marble structures out of crumbling temples, and harvesting a strange magenta leaf plant. Everyone is smiling. You begin to suspect there may be a political agenda to this so-called family game. Only one way to find out. Keep reading. The inst instructions are opaque at first and introduce many concepts you're not familiar with. Fortunately, there are many diagrams and examples throughout. You soon figure out the basic conceit. Each player represents an administrator for the Suzerain of Revachal. Your objective is to increase the Suzerain's wealth and renown by accumulating victory points. <laughs> Fuck the Suzerain, what about my wealth? How do you accumulate victory points? That's where Suzerain's vassals come in. The game features four vassal nations, each home to each one home to an economically important resource. Is this Monopoly of Catan? I've never played Saddlers of Catan. Is it fun? Each chain of the player collects resources from vassals where they've where they've placed workers. They may then rearrange their workers to fulfill contracts for coin and bonuses or build structures back in Revishal. As you leaf through the pages, your eye begins your eye catches on a sidebar labeled Advice for Beginners. Read the advice. Remember, there are many paths to victory in Suzerainty, but successful players will find one strategy and commit to it wholeheartedly. How is the winner determined? The actual scoring system appears infinitely complex, with a series of tables and appendices required to compute each player's final victory point total. You skipped that part for now. Examine the components. You open up a number of pouches containing wooden tokens. There are there are also several punch boards with other cardboard components that will need to be punched out before you can play. Punch out the cardboard pieces one by one. Each cardboard token makes a satisfying chick as you pop it out. Soon a neat pile of cardboard coins and counters has accumulated before you. What, you're not going to offer to let me punch them out? Aww. Aw, I'm sorry, Kim, I didn't think you would want to. Check out the wooden tokens. In addition, to the worker and building tokens used by each player there are also several piles of, we're addicted to kim piles of some piles of colorful resource tokens each representing one of the game's four principal resources for the empire of safri orange apricot tokens for the elmira and the name of the elmira great marble all tokens for the same many islands of the white toxic sugar tokens and from my server but super monday and sarah sarah marisa the magnetic magenta tokens for unprocessed cocaine leaves oh those are nice the lieutenant picks up the sugar token and admires it put the components away you hold the open game box before you Kim, hey Kim, want to play? Lieutenant looks over the rule book before he sees something that makes his eyes go wide. Holy shit, the average playing time for this game is one to six hours. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we have. I'm not sure we have can afford to set aside that kind of time for a game. No! <laughs> what does Lieutenant- What, does Lieutenant hate fun? Is he the fun police? Who died and made you the fun police? Oh, we get to try again! Yeah! What is detective work if not an elaborate game? You need logical inference, attention to detail, and the, the ability to analyze your opponent's motives. Come on, it might help us think of more creative solutions to the case. Hmm, I do feel like my thinking has become somewhat rigid. Maybe a little diversion to keep the mind limber is just what's in order. See, he's doing the hard work himself. All he needed was a little nudge. All right, you've convinced me. How do we play? I don't know. Let's ring it. I read the rules already. I'll show you. You explain the basic set of procedures to the lieutenant, who seems to be a quick study. You each take your bag of to bags of tokens and counters and fold the board between you. In the center is the crown of Revachal, radiating outward are her colorful vassals, each one supplying some raw material desired by the suzerain. Apricots from Safri, archaeological treasures from El Marit, sugar from the Seminine Islands, and magenta cocaine from <laughs> Supramundi, Supramundi, and Sarah Marisa. There's also a neat little log to keep track of your progress in case you need to put the game away and return to it later. The lieutenant goes first. He draws a contract card and moves several of his workers to the Safra territory of the board and the others to the Seminine Islands. All right, detective, your turn. You have a few options available to you. Will you try to fulfill contracts right away and or rearrange your workers to maximize production on future turns? Remember what the rule book said. Ooh, you'll want to choose a strategy early on and stay committed to it. Try, try to fulfill a contract. 
Just do whatever Kim did. No, let your workers rest for a while. Okay, no, I want to rearrange the workers. What? What did Kim do? Let your workers rest for a while is not maximizing the workers, right? I'm confused. I want to do that. Hmm. I'm guessing two is that. Let's do that. Let your workers rest for a while. What? It's the very beginning of the game. Your workers haven't even done any work yet. <laughs> It's not. That's not what it is. No. I forgot we're a fucking crazy person. No. <laughs> we, we've already been the first turn. We've already fucked up. Okay, make them work a little, but not too much. That's more like it. You produce a handful of archaeological treasures and a smattering of other resources. Meanwhile, Lieutenant spends two of his sugar and one of his apricot tokens to complete his contract card. He is rewarded with four coins and a round wooden token that he places in the center of the board. That, that's a market. It's worth two victory points. Hey, why don't I get one of those? Kim, can I do my first turn over? I think I messed up. Come on, Detective. Don't be a spoiled sport. You have plenty of chances to earn your own points. Glower silently. <laughs> Lieutenant turns your baleful look with a satisfied grin. Glancing over the board, you see several. My dumbass thought we were actually gonna play a game, but no, it's just an, another fucking vehicle for our fucking alcohol ad addled fucking piss for brains guy to fuck, it, fuck up again. Oh, glancing over the board, you see several possible strategies. Pressing more workers into service would increase your economic output and help you survive a possible conflict with the lieutenant. Or you could ignore your labor supply and focus on fulfilling contracts for points and resources. The, those aren't your only options. You could also show your workers how much you appreciate them by investing some of that wealth in them. After all, they're the ones producing wealth for the Sue's reign. Well, sure, you can do that, but it's not a terribly effective strategy, but then it's up to you. Invest in your existing workers. Press more workers into service. Focus on fulfilling contracts. Kim, what should I do? That's up to you, detective, but remember, the objective of the game is to earn victory points for the Sue's reign. You should probably pick one strategy and stick to it. Trying to do a little bit, a little of everything is usually a bad idea. But what about the workers? The workers are just there to produce raw resources. You're not supposed to worry about them too much. The lieutenant assumes you're playing by the rules as written. But what's the point of playing if you can't make your own choices? It's Invest in your existing workers. To Lieutenant's puzzlement, you spend several turns building various improvements to your territorial infrastructure. Soon your workers have access to clean water, paved roads, and basic hobbies. In return, they produce one extra resource per turn. <laughs> Gaze on your workers like a benevolent parent. Grimace at them for not working harder, number one. Hmm. Too bad investing your workers just isn't worth many points. What do you mean? Take a look at the scoring tables in the back. Lieutenant turns to one of those appendices you skipped over earlier. You see table 8C that in, you see in table 8C that investing in tetor, tet, territorial, holy fuck, infrastructure multiplies your final victory point by total by 1x, which is to say not at all, whereas erecting monuments to, in Revishal gives you a multiplier of 5x. So you're saying the values of the ruling class are completely divorced from the well-being of the people who generate their wealth. So you're saying I should treat my workers like disposable labor instead. So you're saying I fucked up to number one, sorry. Yes, precisely. Now it's the lieutenant's turn to respond. He moves aggressively onto the Safri territory. Soon his workers are producing a steady supply of extremely valuable apricots. For several turns, you struggle to respond to the lieutenant's burgeoning apricot empire. Eventually, you relocate the majority of your workers to Super Supermundi and Sarah Marisa, where they begin producing a bumper crop of cocaine tokens. You draw a new contract card. According to the text, there's an aristocrat willing to trade a large supply of cocaine for a number of coins and access to a rare bonus, amplified music, worth seven victory points. You know, this isn't unlike the situation the historical Revachalian suzerainty faced in Safri in the middle of the last century. Tell me more. Well, the suzerain was looking for new markets for all of the cocaine it was producing, and it settled on Safri. By introducing cocaine into Safri under under exclusive contract, the suzerain had created an extremely valuable captive market for an extremely addictive product. That's fucked up. That's brilliant. What does that have to do with the game? That's fucked up. If you could somehow get the lieutenant's workers addicted to your cocaine, you could not only make them less productive, you would also force the lieutenant to pay you for your cocaine tokens each turn. Can you even do that? 
Yes, you can. It's right there in the rules. You've reached a critical strategic juncture. How do you respond to Lieutenant's aggression? Rock and roll, baby. Go for the contract. Give back to the workers. Sorry, Kim, you're not going to like this. Introduce the Lieutenant's workers to cocaine. Attack the Lieutenant and steal all his resources. I'm bored with this. Let's go do something. Else. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Kim is best boy. Kim is best boy. Would Kim appreciate and would he even enjoy that we're playing the game by the rules? Or would Kim appreciate it more if he won? We're doing it. Hmm, the lieutenant's face goes stony as you take as you take your turn. He does not appreciate you getting all his workers addicted to cocaine. With each passing turn, you slowly bleed the lieutenant of coins as his own workers become less productive and more dependent on your magenta cocaine tokens. As a matter of historical fact, this is almost exactly what happened in Safri. To this day, fully half of the former Safri Empire remains dependent uh, dependent on international aid in exchange for a steady supply of cheap produce. Isn't isn't this what they did in the Apricot Suzerainty in real life? More or less, the Lieutenant says, but he's thinking less about matters of historical wrongdoing than how to get out of the jam you've put him in. Realizing victory is slipping away, the Lieutenant launches a desperate gambit. Protectionism. By erecting tariffs on your cocaine, he hopes to starve you out of the market at the risk of incurring the Suzerain's disfavor. The endgame is upon you. Do you escalate the trade war with Lieutenant in hopes of crushing him with your economic might? Or do you ignore his aggression and focus on building the mighty victory column structure in Revachal herself? Alternatively, you could throw the whole game away by trying to build a public education system for the children of your workers. The choice is yours. <laughs> For almighty Ravishal, go for the victory column. It's on Kim. Launch a trade war. Build a public ed education system. Okay, I'm building a school founded on cocaine. I'm building a school founded on cocaine. Co cocaine school. There's a reason very few players ever attempt to build a public education system for their worker tokens. It's extremely expensive and never pays off by, by design. You boondoggle, your boondoggle nearly bankrupts the suzerain's treasury and you suffer a significant penalty to your final score. Ouch, Lieutenant says, cringing at your spectacular failure. You taught me that points are arbitrary. I decided to play the game how I wanted to instead. This stupid game is rigged. Huh, maybe I should have pursued a different strategy. Number one. Lieutenant opens his mouth as if to issue a blistering retort, then hesitates. You know, Detective, there's something admirable about that in its own way. Now let's tally up the score, shall we? Computing the final scores is almost a game unto itself. You each spend an inordinate amount of time making stacks of coins, consulting tables, and struggling with basic addition and multiplication. After double and then triple checking your maths, you have your final score. Negative five victory points. You'll be lucky if the suzerain doesn't have your whole family executed for such a pitiful performance. Lieutenant looks up from his tabulations. I've got 20 points, he says, slightly embarrassed at the point differential. Well, there's always next time. Figuratively, I mean, there's no way we have time to play this game again. Now let's clean up and get back to work. You hold the the open game box before you. That was fun. Hey, hey, can we all play this game now? Large letters at the front form a title. We're all. The colorful box is illustrated with uh, bucolic vistas. The cover art also features odd looking humanoids, some short, some taller, some with pointy ears, others with ephemeral wings. Examine the box. Text underneath the title in smaller typeface reads, third edition, mega setting supplements module. The side panel adds a sword and sorcery adventure board game with new maps and miniatures. Shake the box. Mysterious things rattle inside. What could they be? Dice? Plastic miniatures? A fantastical alternate world full of magic and wonder? None of that witless man from Hemdal, fascist, dross, hidden behind faux realistic allegory. Whirl is no cliche written apologia for colonial violence. Whirl is pure imagination. Yes, the world setting is known for its complicated system of political alignments, but if you're not into that, you can just hack your way through dungeons in search of loot. That's what most people do. Look at the back. A blurb of, on the back reads, Tired of the tedium and toil of modern life? Escape to Wirral. Leave behind isolas and nations with their petty squabbles. Discard electricity, magnets, and boring technological widgets. Succumb to a world of high pastoral fa fantastique un- what? So, so to a world of high press neural fantastic. Okay, unleash your imagination and create an adventure of endless possibility to discover the terrible secret threatening we're all. Can your band of adventurers save the world? Yes, 
we're ready to take on this challenge. Exactly, that's the spirit. All you have to do is read an intricate rule book, study an assortment of maps, unfold the illustrated game board, and start rolling dice. In no time, you could be romping through grasslands with low-level characters hunted by ice skull riders, or battling unspeakable monsters in endless dungeons fraught with danger and despair, conjuring up forceful magics to aid your quest. Don't forget heated arguments escalating to physical confrontation with your friends. And most importantly, never forget to rage quit if the dice don't go your way. <laughs> <laughs> open the box you probably open the box inside you find a folded up map a small booklet a 24 sided die and a little plastic figurine look at the map a reprint of a crude hand-drawn map. The top left corner reads Lands of Wirral. The map features both small villages and mid-sized towns with odd names. In addition to meadows, forests, hills, lakes, and seas, also with odd names. It doesn't seem to correspond with anything you've seen thus far. It's not a very helpful map. Look at the, look at the booklet. A quick guide to the magical races of Wirral. Create your own hero choosing from any of these completely unique and fantastical backgrounds. The options are, in order of importance, the Welkin, the Dwarger, the humans, the fairy folk, and the pygmies. Read about the Welkin. The Welkin, tall, lithe, and graceful, with long flowing hair and pointy ears. They're, they're known for being powerful magic users, but can also hold their own in a brawn-driven fight. The Welkin come with a variety of exciting subraces. High Welkin, Forest Welkin, Lake Welkin, Snow Welkin, but if you're not feeling experimental, the basic Welkin will always do well. Read about the Dwarger, a grand race of industri industrious mountain people. They're short, stout, and muscular, and enjoy digging for gold and other precious minerals. They're also well-versed in the art of combat, where they prefer to use axes and hammers. The Dwarger also come in a different in a few different subraces, Hill Dwarger, Shield Dwarger, and Dark Dwarger. Read about the humans. They're just humans. What else is there to tell? They're average in all stats and, just, and jack of all trades. Always bothers me that the humans are, like, are that. It's so, so stupid. Read about the fairy folk. A very small race of flying people known for the being mischievous, full of trickery. They often lure people into their magical traps. Uh, there are no subraces for the fairies. Read about the pygmies. The least popular of the werewolf races, the pygmies are short, rotund, and dim-witted. Pygmies live in small villages made of shoddy wooden dwellings. They spend most of their days tilling the earth and smoking their pipes. There are no subraces for the pygmies. Look at the die. It's made from some sort of wood and has been decorated with peculiar plant motifs. Can we go show the die to, um, to the dice maker? You don't know much about dice, but this one looks pretty fancy. Take the die. You place the die in your pocket. It's always good to have luck on your side. Look at the figurine. You see a man in ragged clothes wearing a lopsided hat and wielding some sort of firearm. Huh, interesting. A communard. A what? A communard, one of the leftist revolutionaries in the anti centennial revolution. What's so interesting about that? The figurine is not part of the real game setting. I guess someone misplaced it during the packaging process. Does this mean we can't play? Lieutenant shrugs. I have a feeling figurines are more there to set the scene than anything else. Take the figurine. You pick up you take you pick up you pick the figurine up by the base and and to meet your gaze? What? The little, little plastic man stares back at you, his face contorted into a disturbing shout, then you pocket it. Close the box. Put the Oh, we don't get to play? Aww. What a nice little figurine. At the turn of the century, left this revolutionary in ragged clothes. On his head lies a lopsided hat, uh, seemingly an Ushanka. And his, in his hand, he carries a little musket. This basic 24-sided role-playing die can be used to get results for several dice. It's made of East Seminese snake wood and embellished with plant motifs. It reminds you of, of Plain and Hill Welkins. Note, look at the map tab in journal to see which white checks have opened. Um, what? Oh! <gasps> Can we go do the 97% check again? Still here, stuck in this. Okay, no. So, if it's white, we can do it again. White is currently open, right? Yeah, alright. So, from A to Shriek, a guide to a well behaved cockatoo. What the fuck is this? Okay, so Mara is not, isn't, is, did not open up. Joyce, Kuno, sleeping dock worker with the physical instrument. I don't even remember the sleeping dock worker. Who's the sleeping dock worker? Map Walt, we're not doing that again. Um, Inland Empire with Kim, we haven't done that one. Mirror, oh, the mirror did open. Wait, what? Oh, electrochemistry one. Oh, stop making the expression. All right. 
Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. <laughs> me and Ever talked. He promised you'd cooperate. Oh, so you went and talked to my mommy, and now she's making me play with you. He spits. Is that it, Lawman? And what's going on if we don't? Sorry, what's going to happen if we don't? The little guy leans forward. You're going to go and tell on us? Very mature guys. Everett sent word, right? Why don't you push me some more and find out, Gimp? You're going to let, you're going to let him talk to me like that, Titus? He turns his eyes full of hurt to the big man. Let's see. He chuckles. Yeah, I guess I am, you big pussy. He turns back to you. The old man sent word you'd be around again. That's the reason I'm being so forthcoming with you. Don't worry it out. It would take an army to bend Titus to its will, but having Everett back you up like that, it did seem to have some effect. Oh, now we can do the authority again. All right. Okay, we have no, we have minus authority from the Ledger of Hatred. All right. Horrific necktie. All right. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Yeah. As you look around this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spinning out tobacco, does this look familiar? Where have I seen this before? You believe the place was called Precinct 41. It was also filled with almost exclusively men sitting on desks, talking shit and wasting time. You s you seen Apricot, old Padu's daughter? Asks Lieutenant McCoy. Uh-huh, replies Torsen. The ass on that one. McCoy shakes his head in appreciation. A bit strange the old man named her Apricot, but I mean, who am I to judge? Want to hit the kebab joint? I get it, Titus. You guys really are the authority around here, huh? You must be. You're just like real cops drinking beer and sitting around with your dicks in your hand. He leans in. You got a problem with beer now? <laughs> Not quite there yet, push on. No, no, I'm drunk I'm drunk on the job too. I don't give a shit just like you guys. No, I'm also a big fan of beer and jerking off instead of helping people. I have a beer problem, but not a problem with beer. I have I also have no idea how to do my job like you. Let's go with that one. Speak for yourself, buddy. He puts the beer down. I've been running this outfit for ten years now. You should have seen Martinez before we started. It was like jam rock now. They didn't see shit, man. He turns to you. Kids getting shot. We had three shootings a week. Fucking graffito everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffito removal. He turns to Titus. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. He picks the beer back up. Don't let him drink that. One more push. Quick. It's not about who did it. It's about the victim. She needs help. Someone's been raped. She needs counseling. We need to talk to her. I've asked this before. Why are you hiding the victim? Mm, Alright, that's a tough decision. Alright. I say one. Titus, he looks at her. She stops in sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up. But on his terms. You want to help her, cop? Fine. I'm going to let you help her, but you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her, Titus taps his, his chin with his fist. A freight train of pain, buddy. Lieutenant takes out his notes. What's her name? Klasje Amando. She's staying here at the Whirling Rags, a real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit, blonde. Titus adjusts his cap. That's Amando with an OU. All right, so so the rape victim is the one that we went up to and said, I want to have fu some fuck with you? Is that is that is that really what was... Oh, God, drunk man. Shit, the girl, the girl upstairs, I can't be here, remember what you said to her? You told her, yeah, okay. <laughs> said you don't remember being a cop, said you don't remember reality, said I want to have fuck with you, said you're a superstar cop. 3%, 3%. 3%. Yeah, blonde, tall, two rooms over from yours. He nods upstairs. Miss Orange Disco Dancer? Sure, why not? You f oh, no, we have to do it. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, we lost a 97% chance earlier. We should win a 3% chance. halfway there you inexplicably add cool after the victim's name with your eyes bulging like some wild beast your fingers are fidgeting and sweat starts forming on your brow as titus looks at you oddly i don't understand what's so cool here <laughs> nothing he gives you a sideways glance we just have a few more questions and we'll be on our way it sounds it sounds like uh you're having a heart attack whatever you said it couldn't have been that bad please relax calm normal try to forget this little hiccup 
Uh, so what was her relationship with the mercenary? So earned the rape. When was that? So scratch your head. What is your relationship with her? I think I laughed nervously. I think I know her. Thank you. We'll talk to her. Okay, do we spaghetti out? Or like, what was the relationship with the mercenary relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's the relationship. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like... Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is relevant to your state investigation. So, the um, the rape, when was that? He did it before we killed him. He's not going to do it again. He crushes his half-empty beer can, so what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. Alright, two weeks maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. He turns to Glenn. Here you go, boss. The tall blonde throws him a can. Titus cracks it open. So, uh, scratch your, scratch your head. What's your relationship with her? I know her. He looks around and an uncommon silence fills the room. How well do you know her? A small twitch in the corner of Kim's mouth. He has a hunch about what knowing means. Well, enough, Copper. We partied. She's been here for a few months. He crosses his arms. So she's not from around here. I see. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Another question. So she's not from around here. You mean Rochelle? Nah. Our Miss or or Orangi disco dancer is an immigrant or a drifter of some sort. Been staying here over the winter. Don't you give her any more trouble. The fat guy blurts out. She's just had some bad luck. That's all. Shut up, Angie. She slaps. She sla He slaps his forehead. Sorry, she doesn't need your help. Titus gives them both a look. They fall silent. What's with all the silences? It's like these guys don't know how to feel feel about this. You should keep picking at it. You said you partied. Cool. That's cool. But what do you? What did you mean? What do you think I meant? Was it sex, drugs, avoid his gaze? Did you do karaoke? Laugh nervously. <laughs> sex, drugs, and karaoke, right? All right, let's go. Yes, yes, and no. He looks at you straight in the eye. Got something to say about it? So you're saying the two of you were close. Wow, you're saying you don't like karaoke? No, we just fucked, that's all. He states matter of factly, I'm not gonna give you I'm not gonna give you any details that's what you're after, so put your dick away. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're gonna get for now. He's doing a good job here. A commendable performance of I don't give a shit. I think I think I laughed nervously. I think I know her. You don't know her. You're wrong. I do. Not the way I do. Alright. Thank, thank you. We'll talk to her. All right, that went awfully. That went awfully. Once his, he points his beer can at you. Remember what I said? Freight train of pain. All right, all right. Kim, Kim, I don't want to talk to you, Kim. Kim, Kim. Officer, what was that? What was what? It was nothing. You mean the sweating and the fidgeting when he mentioned your name? Yes, I think I know that woman. And the sort of quivering jello thing with the eye points your twitching eye. <laughs> his art. <laughs> it's an art thing you wouldn't understand. I think I know that woman. The victim, is there something I should know before we talk to her? Whatever you do, don't say the first thing. I didn't re- <laughs> What the fuck game? Oh. Uh, I met her in the hallway after I woke up. She knows I didn't remember being a cop. I tried to hit on her. I met her in the hallway after I, after I woke up. Understood, you were not in a good shape Monday. I tried to hit on her. Understood, he stone-faced. Better not- better- not to add anything to that. She said I'm going to have to interrogate her later and it's going to suck for me. It is, he nods. This would be would have been a, this would have been good to know before. It didn't come up. It should have. Anything else? She knows I didn't remember being a cop. Okay, he nods. That's manageable. Oh, oh. I didn't rape her. What you're saying is, he says in a low calm voice, you raped her. Ice is forming on the inside of your chest cavity. Cold sweat trickles down your neck. No. Then don't ever say that again. There's a pause. What else? Nothing. Let's move on. He nods. We'll be all right, officer. This is nothing. You feel fortified by his assurance. It's going to be all right. Is it though? Nothing? You're still in for a bumpy ride here. Try not to mess it up. We don't deserve Kim. We don't deserve him. Okay, so we need electrochemistry. We have plus one electrochemistry. Is there anything else for electrochemistry? All the pants have electrochemistry already. All right, there we go. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. 3%. Kind of close. All right, let the mirror be for now. Can we just walk around with a bottle of booze in our hand? Okay, can we talk to her now or no? Knock. Who is it? A woman's voice answered, muffled by the door. Tr tired, controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open, she shouts. I'm drying my hair. Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. Piles of dirty clothes, a woman's. 
Hotel bill calculations. Looks like she's had an extended stay. Oh, sh oh cool. Recycling bottles. We're so professional. We're so professional. You see the yard below. The corpse is no longer there. This is the... This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills have ha haphazardly stacked one on top of each other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. No, we don't. We don't need to look at that. No. Unless, look at the medications. Pharmaceuticals lie on the shelves, sheet upon sheet, and pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, apap, eye drops, blood thinners. There's quite the collection here. Anything of note? He asks in a lowered voice. Search the bottles. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol, his, histoperidol? I don't know what that is. Something in a foreign language you can't read. Um, behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads NACRA. NACRA. This used to treat opiate overdoses. Always handy to have around. Whispers NACRA. Opiate antagonist interesting that's used for diamorphine overdoses lieutenant nods then looks at the door search the pill sheets among some among some foreign probably messian and or got waldian marked red blister packs you find what do you find this is going to take a little know-how okay close the cabinet hold on sorry kim i need to change into my into my electrochemistry clothes A bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it in sunny happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding the little plastic container. Taking it in secret. No, we're not stealing. What's so exciting about this orange bottle? It's speed, man. Just what you were looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine and talk about psychological disorders. But what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. Lieutenant, I don't see a brand called preptide. Preptide, a euphemism for a Paris pharmaceutical amphetamine prescription speed the fuck are you waiting for let's get f super fucking preppy no just taking a <laughs> told kim about it no i'm good uh look at the toothbrush it's been used quite a lot it's, okay the bed has been hastily made This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Run your finger across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice, there are spots of mud and rain on the outside. Even smudges, but the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Follow your lead. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. This window was recently replaced. Looks like it. Yes, he, he adjusts his glasses. Leave. Smell cigarettes, smoke in the air, Astra, menthol. Don't mind me. There's a small, heavy door. There's no lock in sight. Physical instrument, heroic. Kick the door in. Push. It's barred from the inside. You hear a bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy too, very sturdy. Where does this lead to? I don't know. He makes a note of his note in his notebook. It's not the first closed door we found in this building. There's also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and he nods toward the young woman. A number of people can't see the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. See, the main investigation and the door below are merging into a stereo investigation. I could say something, but, but I'm not going to because I don't gloat. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Oh, nice, we just leveled up. All right, so we can get perception back up again and um, and uh, inspect the corpse, because that's what I really want to do right now. All right, are we gonna try and bash this this um, this door down? I mean, why am I even asking? Of course we're going to. Of course we're going to. Okay, is there any other physical instrument buff? I thought we had a different physical instrument buff. You kick it, gung-ho style, entering the premises style, but the door fails to respect the force. All you hear is the bar rattling inside, laughing at you. All right, the woman nods approvingly. Let's trash the place. Let's not. <laughs> Cold coffee and an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. 
Look, a handful of dried wild, dry, handful of dry, dried white wildflowers, not wild white flowers. Just as you look, the, look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them from the up from the air. Hand eye coordination, medium. Move your hand fast. Discard chance. All right, are we gonna hit her in the face? <laughs> wind brushes them off the roof. They're gone. Uh, Welcome to the roof. I feel like we've had uh, statistically uh, bad luck today. Improbable bad luck. Welcome to the roof. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Nice view you got here. Is there a cleaning lady? I think I need one. Proceed politely. No time for pleasantries. We have questions for you. Nice view you got here. It's much nicer now. Her eyes wander north toward the yard. Where the dead body used to hang, clearly visible from the roof, but no longer. It's kind of fucked up that they just left it there. Thank you for that, officers. Truly. There's something in her light brown eyes, a sadness, when she thinks about the death of that man. You mentioned a cleaning lady. I think I need one. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. It has. Disco Infernum. Hell, you know you know not of which you speak. There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell. To another place. A third place. Much different from our world. Where suddenly we're Gundam? No, I just trashed the place. Disco Infernum. They also say that's why the cleaning lady quit. Because of the Infernum. I am Kim Kitsuragi. I am a detective from Precinct 57. I believe you have already met my colleague from Precinct 41. Have I ever? This is the one and only superstar cop. It's kind of a big deal around here. Hear that, Kim? I am a huge deal around here. This is part of the <clears throat> thing I told you about. I am sad to say I have shifted copotypes. <laughs> Things are very far from wow, little miss. Lead in. I am a changed man, a cop reborn to repent my shortcomings. I am the sorry cop. Oh, no, we're not. We're not. Um, we're not art cop. God damn it. A penitent cop monk. What brings this changed man to me? Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Ah. Uh. I see. She takes a pensive drag of her menthol cigarette. Be careful. Ask something else first. When you go there, use words like, I hear you've, you've been through something difficult. What's your name, miss, for the record? Nice room you've got here. They tell us you've been through something difficult. I notice your room is close to mine. I have a personal question. What's your name, miss, for the record? How do you pronounce your name? Cla Cla Class G? Class J? Amando? Classia? Classia. Am I saying it right now? Classia? Classia? Oh, that's kind of pretty, actually. I like that name. Classia. Same name that Titus gave you. It sounds Orangenese, as does her accent. Classia. Her birthmarks also signal orangey. You don't know why, but orangey's girls tend to come speckled with them. Are you from orangey? How old are you? What do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Can we take a look at your passport, please? Thanks. Thank you. That's, that's it for the record. Oranya. Classia and Oranya. Okay, I'll try to remember. Are you from Oranya? Right, sir. Red Fort, Republic of Oranya. I guess you could say I am Or Oranyan. Okay, how do you say that then? Oranyanese? Expatriate. What is Oranya? A bad memory officer. Understood, miss. It's the past. She takes a sip of her coffee. People can't go back to the past. Unless you're the angry video game nerd. Thankfully, it's implied. How old are you? I'm 28. She takes a drag. What do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Something stupid. Wanna hear what's stupid? Somewhere 
in a one-room apartment on Boogie Street, a young man shows Patrol Officer Tilbrook his general, gen, genital warts asking if they're cancer. His partner, Emil Mullins, can't be there. He's in another apartment with another man who's showing him a dead dog under the radiator. It's dead, Mullins says. No, the man replies, I touched him. He's warm. He, he's warm, Mullins, Mullins replies, because he's under the radiator. You're a cop? No, no, more stupid. Aron, Aronyi's lit. I can't say that. Aronyi's lit. Aranya's, Aranya, Aranya, I can't say, I'm sorry, literature, um, it's what I studied, it's the university, she raises both eyebrows, what is Aranya's literature about, fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Ar Aranya's, all national literatures are, only the name of the, of the nation changes. What about Ravishalian Re Re literature, people sometimes reveal things about themselves when they discuss such matters, Ravishalian literature too? No, she seems glad that you asked. Revishalian Rav lit is about how magnificent and serious Revishal Rav is. It's about how you have to save the world. I have no intention of doing that. I do feel the urge to save the world, yes. I guess that's why I'm on this case. Uh, the world is unimportant. I want to hear about you. Number two. That's the natural state of the Revishalian hero. He, she breathes in the menthol-flavored fume, savoring it, then breathes out. She seems quite relaxed for a victim of assault, but of course, what seems should not be your priority. Or Orangenese lit. What do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make s how how do you make some money then? Money is very important. Show her some money. What? No, we're not doing that. Cool. That's so awkward. Can you, can we please take a look at your passport? Can we take a look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag in an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candor. Why? They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. I'm pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your passport, miss. How do you know? How do I know you've told us your real name? If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Classia Amando. It's a weird name. She seems to be telling the truth, sire. Okay, then. Conclude. Okie dokie. She pours herself more coffee. Okay. First of all, from where? Second of all, that was... A a long, long sound. Thank you. That's it for the record. The record so official. Nice room you got here. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. What are you doing here in the whirling and rags? I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? She calculates about four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in the whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Revachal? Here in the whirling. Because it's the funkiest building in Martinez, and because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. You have the collection of prescription drugs down there. <sighs> Where does the door lead to? Point to the door on the roof. You tell me, officer, when you kicked it down. When you've kicked it down. Uh, I've been wondering myself, but I'm light of foot. Not a good door kicker. That window is new. It is. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. The lieutenant makes a note in her in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the drugs. I have other questions for you. Okay. Watching yourself reflect in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. They tell us you've been through something difficult. I notice your room is close to mine. I have a personal question. Yes, you're just one room away. She pours herself more coffee. Very personal. Good. Yes, this means she could have heard something, like what you were doing before you blacked out. Were you in Sunday night? I need to know what I did before I lost my memory. You do not need to know that. Lieutenant taps on his notebook. What you need to, what you need is to ask normal police questions, like he waits for you to finish the sentence. Get a grip, he thinks. At least do your personal stuff when I'm not here. We need to come back. What the hell, Kim? They tell us you've been through something difficult. Something difficult? She raises her eyebrows. I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? Were you sexually assaulted, miss? Have you been raped? Forget about Forget about it. I don't want to talk about this shit. Were you sexually assaulted, miss? By sexually assaulted, do you mean raped? She takes a quick drag, unperturbed. Yes. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? She sounds... Positively buoyant, vivacious, totally unbothered. Actually, it's already afternoon. And what does that mean? Were you? Actually, it's already afternoon. Is it? Squinting, she takes a look around. The spring sun is high in the sky. People pass below. It is afternoon. She looks into her coffee cup. Time flies, man. So were you? Yeah, she draws out the word. I'm going to go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. By him, she must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to... Get some someone more. She searches for the word, then shrugs. Rapeable. 
It's all very organic, her mannerisms, her movements. If she's acting, she's quite gifted. By they, she means the Hardy Boys. Are you saying you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery, sexual assault maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Titus asked you to spice things up for us? Are you sure you weren't raped? What did happen between you and the victim? What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? How did they hang How did they hang him for this? Sorry, what did they hang him for if not the rape? I was mashing those two together. How, how do the Hardy Boys know you? All right, hmm. Pretty much, she cradles her coffee cup in both hands. Hmm. All right, what's going on here? Are you a strike breaker plant too? Are you sure you weren't raped? Wow, we're just, we're gonna ask that. All right, I'm 89% sure. So you're not entirely sure. Does that mean you're not 11, does that mean you're 11% not sure? Got it, 89% is good enough. Moving on, no, we, we failed even higher than that. So you're not entirely sure. You know how it is. Do you? Do I? Hmm. She f <laughs> she flicks a bit of ash away. Maybe you don't. The ash lines on her jumpsuit. She brushes it off. There are numerous cigarette burns on those silvery scales. Easy to see now that you're closer. In conclusion, officer, I'm going to go with a mild to medium not raped here. Okay, then. No one deserves to be raped. Sexual assault is a serious matter. I need a serious statement from you. It sounds like something happened and you don't want to acknowledge it. Let me make this 100% clear, then, officer. I was not sexually assaulted. She, t she tilts her head. Would I be as flippant if I had been? What did happen between you and the victim? We partied. Wait, partied. Where have I heard that before? You mean like a birthday party? What kind of partying? Points to your bloated, points to your bloated face. The kind I do? With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. No one parties harder than me. Harder than this? Keep pointing to your face. I didn't know it was physically possible. Oh, it is. She takes a long drag. You're still alive. What did you do when you partied? We drank, sir. She takes a sip of her coffee. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder, and then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. You were lovers? Were feelings involved? Understood. Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough, and we did enough of them. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet, calm. Downstairs, she taps on the roof with her 10 centimeter heel at the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. A military man, as you probably know, had a cool, scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that? It must have been hard for you, point to the yard, seeing him there. Oh yes, she says bitterly. I've had a great view from the roof out of, the, out of the bathroom window in my dreams. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look at the lieutenant. You called us, the RCM. Yes. Jackpot. The call. Reporting the hanging. That was you. Say nothing. I made it, she nods. I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Revishall, miss. Before we go on, if it's snitching, then why do it? The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it? How? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. So that's why the phone is out of order. She tampered with the whirling landline. And in the process, you broke the landline downstairs. Did I? She looks into her coffee. Fuck, I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. Jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union, union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. We're not entirely convinced about that answer, but okay, let it slide. Pushing won't help here. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir, but if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do it. She puffs on her cigarette. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him like he is now. I can't talk about his, I don't know, hair. Another puff, more nervous. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. She meant she sees him in her dreams. I've also seen him in a dream. You have? Not like I do, I imagine. She's run out of cigarette. Time to light a new one. How do you see him? You don't want to know. She looks into the pack. It's light green. Then pulls out a ciggy. I see him as me. She dips the cigarette into the lighter's flame and inhales and looks at you with her lungs full of smoke. I can see the similarity. Yes, she breathes out through her nostrils. The air smells of menthol. Funny, the lieutenant says softly. Funny how? Nothing. He nods toward the yard. I also saw him. We had a long inspection and that sort of thing. Sticks with you. Let's move on. Ooh. Okay. What did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing, she thinks, but you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was what? 
I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean, but I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. How do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests downstairs. She looks at the floor. It's tarred. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. And how did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had any physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which one? Which one, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. Thank you for telling us all this mess. Conclude. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief. The weariness, the air on the roof feels sorry, and weariness. The roof on the air on the, the air on the roof feels humid. The roof on the air. We should head back downstairs, officer. The lieutenant looks at you. We may have things to discuss there. That's something else before we go. A little thing. She nods. Silvery cigarette fume disappears into her mouth. Volition. Look her in the eye. She looks back, time moves slowly, the triangles on her face rearranging, rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. We protect you we will protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. We will see through deceits. You are shielded. You are wise. What is happening? Nothing, just time passing, don't worry. Anything out of the ordinary and you would be notified. Air moves in your windpipe. Your, this is so cool. Your heart beats. You're a detective. Get back to detecting. Am I being beguiled? She presses her elbows against her waist and slowly turns her head. Her hair brushes her shoulders, making a small hissing sound almost imperceptible. Revert your eyes. The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 seconds. I don't trust Classia. Why not? I'll be here until 11, drinking coffee most likely. Kimosati. Yeah, but I don't want. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called Hardy Boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. I, I don't want to talk to him in front of her. Uh, you think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they're prepared for us. We just stripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not co cooperate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Say in a harsh voice, "Why did she tell us any all of that? What else could she? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it." You would have caught it. Not, I would have caught it. I'm not sure she had to lie. I wouldn't have known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. She seems candid. You think so? A shadow runs across his face. Being candid is the best way to lie. The appearance of candor with some facts thrown in draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will be will bring us back here soon enough. All right. Is that what you wanted to say to me, Kim? Yes. I found out what the pale pale is while you were gone. Wonderful. He does not seem surprised. What is your what is your takeaway? Wait, you're not surprised? I can't stop a grown man from learning about the fundamental geographic and intropanetic uh, features of our world, can I? Perhaps I shouldn't have tried. He thinks. Perhaps I was overprotective. Is what it's. Perhaps I was overprotective. Is what's insinuated. I think it's terrifying. Then I was right to spare you from it. No, he cracks a little smile. Anyway, the pale is no more terrifying than say water or death or that we're stuck behind our eyes for all eternity. He looks around pensive suddenly. Whoa, there, there, Kim, there are layers to Kim. There's depth here. There's depth to this beautiful, beautiful man. Excuse me, large topics are not my forte. You seem stable enough, keep it that way. Now, was there anything else or should we, we get to it? All right, let's go look at the body with our perception, with our special eyes. And I wanna explore the new area. I don't wanna to talk to the Hardy Boys. If you're playing as Ultimate Art Cop Yusuke, why aren't you wearing an Ahago hoodie? Well, first of all, we haven't found one. And second of all, I don't know, our cops aren't all that hungry. Remember about the body and the fish? Yeah, that's what we're going to go do. We leveled up perception for this. Um, Time to go through perception again. If it's low, should we go get perception glasses? 42. Maybe we should go get perception glasses. Why aren't we doing the check with him? Uh, because it just doesn't feel like yes. an art cop kind of thing to do. Like, um... One one of the like we're we're kind of playing it fast and loose with the whole RP that we're doing, but one of the things I'm trying to stick to is that Art Cop, Art Cop never steals, and Art Cop, Art Cop very rarely lies. We have lied a couple times because it just seems like the best thing to do, but like malicious, just willful lies. Like nah, ask him about the pissing contest. Did we do that already? Yes. Uh, I don't I don't see a way to ask him about the pissing contest. 
Oh, it's here. Now we've inspected the scene. I want to know more about this pissing content. Oh, did you actually want? Okay, I, I dislike it when there's new things and it doesn't highlight the text option again. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop part. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor, yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the union make a mockery of the law enforcement here, and now it's come to come to its natural conclusion. Ah, so this is the sh a struggle over who runs Martinez. Well, sort of. It's a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite the bro brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But he leans in. I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 100, 102 cases solved. What I am is the least interested in a pissing competition. So he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of com competitiveness, on the contrary. So you volunteered to spoil it. What's special about Martinez? I wonder what this says about me, that I was sent by my station. So special Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. So you volunteered to spoil it. Yes, I am an, I am an unrepentant spoiled sport. Lieutenant appears pleased with, with this. I wonder what it says about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm. He raises an eyebrow, thinking it best to let you make the next move. Challenging success. It's all part of the master plan, you see. I'm a highly experimental cop, but if I am right, this is outre? Uh, out, out, outre? Even by my standards, I was sent to teach you a lesson in style. There can only be one conclusion. I am the finest, I am the finest, the finest, a case solving machine sent to outperform you in every way imaginable. I must be an augury, an ap apocalyptic omen sent by my people. Can you guess my message? I probably have an unbelievable kill count. Yeah, we have three. I'm going to leave why I was sent unspecified. Utri? Utri? Outri? Let's go with number one. Really? His eyebrow gets raised one one more notch. I arrive at the scene three days early, drink myself into oblivion, fully re immerse myself in this reality, and then work the case from an angle so Crescent f Fresh produces never before seen results. Not f only for criminology, but for the human mind. It can't be that. Part of him sort of wants to believe what you just said. It isn't, but I will prove it so. I am notoriously difficult to work with, wonderkind, wonderkind, with extremely unorthodox methods. Of course not. I'm just a drunk. They sent a drunk. Are you sure? Who's, who's could say it's not true? If you really don't remember anything, how would you know? The thought makes someone easy. We should move on. Okay, the idea that, that, that our character just does this on every case is just so amusing to me just like every oh, time for a case time to get completely arrive early get completely wasted lose my memory and then just stumble my way through it drunk and hung over <laughs> it's just amazing okay um uh, logic formidable why did the 41st send me Look at you, it's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. What? No, that can't be right. Yeah, makes more sense than the other stuff I thought of. Wait, it can't be right. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late. Uh, three days late? Sent three days late wearing piss. I thought we were early. Piss stain, disco garb, you weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my Precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck up, like as a joke? I've considered it. His voice is somber. somber. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them. Not to mention unprofessional, but I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Well, haven't we solved, like, a lot of cases? Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. This is old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. So, ha, so you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Safe, no, but you're old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what, what it is yet, but it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke, and even if they did, they are in for a surprise. Aw, oh, man! He's right, there are no airtight theories, just paranoia. You've given it some thought, and let's go- he Best boy! Seriously! Holy shit! Kim is turning into, like, candidate for, for best character of any game that we've played. Holy shit, he's so good! Hmm, the tent looks down the street, we can sell the benches after we sell the murder, let's go. Okay, can we sell the bench when he's not around? There's something down there. The musty smell of- of a potato cellar and spring emanates from the air vent. Hey, do you want this figurine I found of the of the war? Officer! God damn it! Pull yourself together, Rene! What do you want? Rene, I found your guard booth. 
Yes, the Dubberdars Union pays me to stand vigil during the nights. He looks down, not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man, don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. He adds with a slight sigh. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth, lo your booth looks right into the yard. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. You looked happy. Who's the girl? His, his features stiffen and he gets a cold look. She is nobody. This is none of your concern. I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. Lady is Jean Marie Bilou. Gaston speaks with a soft voice, and she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. You have seen something on the night? Yes, it does. He nods. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two week leave since last Monday. Hold on. Why are you on a leave? It's a private matter, he says with dignity. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, Officer Rene is the kind of man who'd rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, seek it. A real man's man. He's just going to write it out. I'm fine, God damn it. Mind your own business. The outburst makes him clutch his chest. It's nothing. Just got cut back on coffee. Just got to cut back on coffee. So who's working your shift that night? No one. The booth has been unmanned since last Monday. He, he looks suddenly very old and tired. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one's been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes, he nods before hesitantly continuing. It's it's not actually an issue. I mean, look, officers, his partner jumps in. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before. Rene, Mr. Claire had that booth built especially for him. It's mostly decorative. <gasps> mostly decorative. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals, he tries to argue. Everett created this job for Rene because he knows the Royal Ca Carabineer's Pension of Honor and PTST isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting tar reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words, ever gets it. Big guys looking after the small and everyone working together. I love it. Such de dependency only weakens a man further. Do or die. There is no middle ground. Rene is but one man. I need a program. Got all the elderly. Get all the elderly back in the job market. Keep folks motivated. Rene should rent out his services. Invest the profit. Get a few more guys. Expand and repeat. Wage work is a dead end. There's absolutely nothing wrong with tar collecting. It's my side thing too. Proudly hold out the tar bag. <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean to apply there's something wrong with that. The jolly man says quickly, I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Yes, yes, yes. The, the carabineer utters angrily. Can we conclude the topping of my guard booth now? He is not going to become an entrepreneur. Got it. Thanks. Composure. Know about Rennie's job situation. Still, okay. We're never, we're gonna, we're, wait, 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 wait. Was that a five and a six? Were we one off? Holy shit. All right, we're here. We're finally here in the new location. Remember when we ended last stream here? And we and then we were just quickly going to go and do some shit and then come back? All right, well, that was two and a half hours ago. Oh, the glasses. Yeah, we haven't lifted the body yet. Sorry. <laughs> the shine on those sunglasses lasts a lifetime. Also. Oh, these don't increase our perception. Guaranteed. They lower it. God damn it. All right, let's just do it without it. I just got here, so I was worried I'd miss exploring over there. No, we just, we just, I feel like we, we fucked around, but also progressed the main story quite a bit this stream, but yeah. You can talk to Rennie's friend. I think we did it already. God damn it. What the fuck? You touched the, how many times have we fucking failed this? You know what I'd be interested in playing? I'd be interested in playing a game, a version of this game with it, with it hacked from the beginning or whatever, like like with a trainer, that everything's maxed out. So you can see them all maxed out interacting with each other and succeeding on every case just to see what happens. I think that would be fun. Same for like maybe like having it all at zero and you can't do anything. I think that would be fun. No, that's no fun. I think it would be fun after you've already played the game maybe at least once, maybe even three times. It's one arrow and you can't fail. Well, it's not. It's not about um, succeeding and failing at that point. It's about just seeing what all the all the skills will say about certain things. Traffic beyond the gate. More abandoned motor lorries. Sun says no entry. Someone scribbled an inverted star on it. Okay. Well, they still don't have perception on them. Empathy, but less logic. Visual visual calculus, but. More, less drama. Let's go empathy, but less logic. Someone has broken down the fence and the barbed wire. G 
glory, says the graffito, to the ghosts of us. Someone has left their music collection beneath the tarpaulin. Tape smallest church in St. Sains. Oh, isn't that the, the sad song that we want to sing in karaoke? There's no way to listen to the tape without a working tape player or port, port a reel at hand. But even just holding the tape makes you feel a little sad. A pawn shop, a pawn shop would have a tape player. Swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small hoose behind you. There's desolation everywhere. What happened here? In this yard, the lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of gray swallows takes off in the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago was it abandoned? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. Wait, what's a block obscure? A black block, a part of the city left unrenovated after the war, or one that has fallen to gang violence, or has become inhospi inhospitable in some other way. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares, hence their name. <clears throat> so this part of the coast is a block obscure? Practically, it's not an official term in any way, but he spread his arms. Look around, no sewage, broken power lines, crime, drunks, life is tough in, in the blocks. There, it's no place to build a summer hoose. At least they left some old music behind. Tap on the tape you picked up. Yep, yes, and you picked it up because you're a post-apocalyptic scavenger who collects trash and magnesium blisters. He gives you a weary smile. It's not meant to, it's not meant as nagging, just an observation. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland, at least in this phase of the investigation. Thank you, Mike Huntis for Timmy. That was a, a minefield. Not reading that out again. Thank you very much for the new sub of Prime. Welcome to Prime Time. My what? No, Mike Huntus. It's Mike Huntus for Timmy. Mike Huntus for Timmy. That's the name. What did you guys hear? Why are we on so far left on the screen right now? I feel like someone got broken. Ooh, okay. Don't we need visual calculus for this? There's a boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. Great news. The boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in a supine position. Wait, what would... Wait, what would I be doing under there? Great news. I found somewhere new to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Great news, I found somewhere new to sleep, huh? I said great news, I found somewhere to sleep. Point at the boat, under this boat. Here, it'll be free. I can pretty much finish the case from under that boat there. It's dry, weatherproof, and free of charge. I'm gonna live under a boat now. So pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. You have a home somewhere all cops do. When this is done, you can return. <laughs> oh, fuck. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. A dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel oil. The logo on the side has been partially stri stripped over years of use. The government issue issued red dyed fuel oil inside. Looks like paint, although it smells much, much worse. Yes, yes, let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, 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 how close are we leveling up? All right, let's hold on. Let's finish this so we can do, we can do perception at, at the same time. A ball drained of all its booze is frozen in the ice. This is it, the scene of the party. The fire, pit, cigarettes, and empty bottles, all evidence of it. Hold up, don't you mean scene of the crime? Not not as such, I'm talking about what came after the party scene. Yeah, it sure does look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a, a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hey Kim, looks like we had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Looks like they had a great time laughing here. This, this was some kind of theater to them, a circus production by a great clown. Was this party against the law on the ice like this? It was probably a public danger, number two. Lieutenant adjusts his glasses and nods. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. Somehow, he doesn't want to dwell on it. The ice just off the coast crackles, shifting. Sunken motor carriage. 
A banked up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulidian Ocean. Only the ca cabin top real wheels, rear wheels and the engine remain visible. It must be cold and lonely down there in the icy water. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. So this is where all the tracks were leading to. It appears to be so. The lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage. Let's investigate. I agree, the lieutenant replies. His eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Run your hand over the cold metal. What, What is the make of the MC? Can I see a logo? How long has it been here? Well, well, well. Looks like Jake with Ear's journey came to an abrupt end here. What? What should we do? Run your hand over the cold metal. The motor carriage is properly stuck in, in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. What does it make of the MC? Can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. He leans forward to peek into the ice, ice, into the cold water. My guess has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. All right, the estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Well, well, well. Your mocking tone finds no response but the motion of the waves. Did you say something, Lieutenant? Y yes, yes, rub your chin. Crazy recklessness. Yet another case of the engine, dis of case of the engine displacement tri engine displacement triumphing over the driver's IQ. Did you say something, Lieutenant? I did not. What the fuck? He gives you a, a blank stare. I don't know what that refers to. Uh, what should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket, a joyrider jacket. I'm pretty sure we did this. A joyrider jacket? You feel a strange connection to this joyrider. Maybe he's from some kind of joyrider's district and likes blue and white racing livery like a cop would. How long will it take for low tide to come in? I don't know. About an hour or two tops. Sit on the swing and wait for the tide to recede. Aw, oh, look, look at us! Two cops hanging on the swing set. As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. <laughs> Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Alright, can't, can't wait to fuck up this one. The tune on your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitch and slightly more me me melodic trill. Two birds on a wire whistling by the seaside, looking at the water in a sunken car. The clouds pass in the sky and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for a discussion. Seriously, I really like Kim. Seriously. So you're so is your dad also, you know, point to your eyes. <laughs> oh my <laughs> What? The tide sure is taking a sweet time. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Well, Lieutenant rubs his hand, his chin. Historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Okay, he's thinking, I can do this, let's do this. Who'd want to sit on, sit on an anthill? There are no therapeutic benefits to. Well, napalm ants, for example, are used in some rites of passage rituals. Clouds on the horizon grow darker and, you're, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city, 30 minutes pass. If you have to side with either the strikers or the shipping company, who would you choose? Do you think I'll ever, I will ever find my gun? Man, this is taking a long time number one luckily luckily i am already a member of an independent organization and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place but if someone puts a gun to your head i guess that's just your way of saying you'd side with the company i understand you're you're saying you, you're siding with the union gun to your head your voice is echoed in the water strange and out of place in the environment 30 more minutes pass can you make out the mark now squint your eyes and say is that a number on the side proceed yes 40 <laughs> Oh no! Oh, he's like, he's like sitting on the swing, going back and forth. Like, hi, huh, I wonder who did this. <laughs> it's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. 
Does he know something about that speed racer? 41 is his rank in the underground street racing hierarchy, rub your trend. Small fish this one. 41, huh? The street racer is quite the ladies' man. This must be Tommy41, the morning host of FM41. Looks like the factory made a mistake. <laughs> accidentally called this one Coopery41. Scoff, stupid factory. I hate guessing district something, a precinct, something municipal. Rub your temples, you're getting a horrible headache. Oh god, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 41. Precinct 41, a massive pit opens in your stomach and the most terrible feeling comes over you. No, just no. Say no to this, Harry. <laughs> No, no. Oh my god, it's mine. I drove my car into the sea. No, no. Yes, if your car is in the sea, face it so we can start dealing with this. No, I mean, seriously, it's just a coincidence. Lieutenant just shakes his head. No, it's the street racer. There were never any street racers. It was always you. You drove your car in the sea. Oh, God. I'm afraid, yes, it looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Maybe I was in pursuit of someone. How do we get it out? I can still fix it. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? The badge, the gun, and now this. Things are going so well. We were just whistling merrily. <laughs> You can still whistle, the Lieutenant says with a smile, besides the night is always darkest before the dawn. The badge, the gun, now this, Lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There's also a fourth thing that you've lost. A fourth thing? More precious than the gun, the badge, and the motor carriage combined, lost forever in the deepest of seas. May always in pursuit of someone, of whom, the Lieutenant looks skeptical. I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. How do we get it out? Detective, he says almost gently, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. So it's just going to be there like that? I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years he looks around look at it parts of it might be salvageable but overall this machine is a write-off i can still fix it that is very unlikely lieutenant replies with a sigh all the electrics are toast that goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well you'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there he shakes his head in a few months there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle it'll be cheaper to buy a new one well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the... Oh my god. In the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. I don't have that kind of money. I couldn't even pay a hostel bill. <laughs> Let's face it. This is a substantial loss to your district's budget. He's avoiding your gaze now. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. This was 20% tw of the station's vehicular budget. God. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than machines. He's trying to cheer you up now. Training a police officer is even more costly. Well, at least I can see what's in there now. Conclude. Yes, let's go take a look. Go to your inventory and interact with the item by clicking the interact tab and then interact what? RCM. Oh, we got our badge. And we got our RCM commander's job. We are a commander? Dubois. So, Esprit de Corps and Shivers, or Esprit de Corps and Visual Calculus. Uh, I think I prefer Shivers. Thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with your officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you can you see a man stare back at you. A younger version of you, already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. A police badge on which you, f you see the photo of a man, you. Some seaweed is stuck on the back, stuck to the back. I found my badge. At least something good came out of all of this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hand. Study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a, bl a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the, of the street grid of Revachal West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. But the badge is new. You use an old photo for a new badge. How old? Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture is rather good-looking. He's got a nice haircut and, a dis and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking. Why? Why do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression. Although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. The badge in your, in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching a light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Name. Harrier Dubois. Harrier, that's long for Harry. So you are Harry, he thinks. Everett was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Wait, what kind of name is Harrier? 
It's a wartime name, revolutionary, the kind mothers give their sons during troubled times like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide, a name like Armor. But I don't want to be Harry or Dubois. Don't accept it. Harry Dubois it is then accept it. Yeah, I will accept this name. Please to make your acquaintance, Harry or Dubois. He's not going to call you Harrier. He'll keep calling you Officer when he's angry with you and Detective when he's not. The badge is kind of light, blah, blah, blah. Rank LTN2JFR, Lieutenant Double Yefriter. What is Lieutenant Double Yefriter? Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a Lieutenant and Double Yefriter. The title of Yefriter is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to the higher rank. In your case, Captain. Lieutenant explains, you have declined twice, thus your Double Yefriter declined. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's decomptage might be taken, or sometimes promote officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, he continues, they just prefer the type of work available to their current rank, in your case, lieutenant. Heavy duty case solving machine. What's decomptage? Decomptage is a hierarchical system applied by the Revishal Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. Countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Koenigstein. Koenigstein? The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers, then there are the patrol officers and sergeants, lieutenants, and then the captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Kinks like satellite officers and the additional Yef Eater rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. Wait, satellite officers? So you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior? So you've been putting up with putting up with me because we're of the same rank? Thanks for explaining all this. No, we're the... Wait, satellite officers? You were given the title of satellite officer. If your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him, you don't seem to be a satellite. So you've been putting up with me because we're of the same rank? No, I've been putting up with you because despite my unconventional approach, you're doing good police work or un unconventional approach. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. He smiles encouragingly, and now we've even found your badge. He trusts you for now, try not to spoil it. I thought my rank was drunk. Yes, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past, and he pauses to examine you. This leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. Thanks, that gives me hope. I'm afraid there are no ex-alcoholics. I don't want to get better, I want to get worse. Thanks, that gives me hope. Good, he says with a quick smile. Turn back to the document. Serial, REV, blah, 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 blah. That's just a serial number of Revishal Jamrock. Precinct 41 with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose, one that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. Date of issue, 7th of November 50. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Double Yefriter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. You're probably sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you, of that you are sure. Precinct 41. Yes, it's the designation of your precinct. 41, like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor, a lot of asphalt. The 41st is, he stops, what? It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have been three precincts, but money is, is what it is. It's no wonder you, you are like... You are like you are, he thinks, but then again. But then again, a faint smile is a legendary district and a hell of a station, too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price McCoy, Berdyevyeva, Roberts, Firabach, Dimitri. Suddenly, names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. Put the badge away. All right, nice. We finally found it. Footprints in the snow, they lead away from the accident. Seems like the walker was either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Eh. The underside of the boat has recently been tarred. Alice, what? Alice Vosen? All right, uh, so I want to do the paint thing and we leveled up so we can level up our perception again, right? And we can go and try and look at the body again. All right, let's go. Also, we can probably talk to those cops in the whirling and rags foyer now that we have our ID. Maybe they'll talk to us. Last try. What do you mean last try? You can't level up perception anymore. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, you're right. Hey, I found my badge. Are we friends again? Again. I can't believe this shit. No. Yes? What is it? Are you by any chance leaning real close? Working class? 
Are you with him? Points the man with sunglasses. Of course I'm with him. She seems startled by her own tone. Why do you ask? He's an asshole. He seems like a cool guy. You look cute together. Nothing just... You look cute together. And you look like you don't bathe on principle. The man with sunglasses interjects. Please, she looks at you, then him, then you again. Let's not turn this into another exchange, okay? Are you by any chance working class? Well... Raising two children and half a husband on a patrol officer's wage. Yes, I guess I am working class. Do you want Do you want to rise up and tear down the entire fucking system with me? Cool. Give her a little wink. I am too. Good to know. Good to know. What the fuck? Give her a wink. Uh, okay. What the shit? All right. Let's. Okay. This didn't do shit. All right. Were we supposed to like say that we know her name? I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Are you Lizzie Elizabeth Miss Beaufort? I, I suggest not wasting time on trivial little pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy, she points to the tall man at the table. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You're not here to chat with the legal counsel. You're here to question these men. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. A man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. <laughs> <laughs> he said Mr. Everett sent you to law school. He said you were in debt to Mr. Clare. He said you're the union fixer. You fix things. He said that you're Mr. Everett's do et sucra death machine. I represent the union and these men here. She points to the crew around the table. Don't make this personal. A very minor victory. Nice. Are you the hardy girl? I'm not, she says dryly. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod. Her face stiffens. Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. All right. How many more times will he miss the window? What window? What are we talking about? Oh, we're supposed to talk about the talk to the chef about the the stew as well. What window? This one here. Find the dock workers the ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches sca scrape the glass like bony fingers. Uh, could I have always inspected this, or was it because I got my perception eye? You see two, maybe three bushes grown into a single thicket over a period of circa fifty years ago. It takes time for a hedge to grow like for a hedge like that to form. Squint. There's a little side panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's too still. It's still too cold outside. All right. Mysterious door scene. Really? We get double sixes on that. There's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches, light yellow faded with time, a tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket hanging from it, a bronze key. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached the yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to, to latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not coincidence. Someone's hid a key in the bush, point at the window. Huh? The big guy looks behind him. I need you guys to hand the key to me. Can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing? Titus, can you hand the key to me, please? Can't you slide by some other thing? I don't know about that. The dude man yawns and settles in. Settles more comfortably on the bench. I'm comfortable here. I don't think any sliding would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're going to have to go bush diving. Good luck with that. The hawthorn's got a, a bitch to bite. Bitch of a bite. I'm going to enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the hawthorn bridge aside across the table to you. Take the key. Key is brass, workshop spare is etched into the to its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man, we were just having some fun. Where's the harm in it? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Thank you, not the old man. Does anyone know why this key was hanging out right outside the union box window? Look at the key in your hand. I wonder what doors what doors does it open? Thank you, not the old man. Don't thank me. The old man get, takes out his pack of chewing tobacco. I don't give two shits about your key. I wonder what doors it opened. It could open the door in the kitchen. The blue door, he looks at the key in your hand. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there. It's worth a try. All right, let's leave. This ever your friends with Manana. Is that true? What's in the porch? Yeah, Manana first. The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. What's in the porch you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in a, in a strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asks you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. R yes, nod. No, shake your head. Mercury rising. Run your fingers through your hair. Sorry. <laughs> The man looks at you, and then the soup, his face lightens up. He picks up a bottle of from the shelf. Barsk need more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. He nods. Clever move by the union. Of course, vodka. Now that it now that it makes it very a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. Yes, nod and turn your fingers clockwise. Turn the vodka up. No, no, no vodka. Turn your fingers counterclockwise. Cut it. I'll leave the cooking to you. Shrug. I had business. 
The cook gives you a long inspecting look, then shrugs too and seems to wait for you to speak. Alright, leave. Alright, so we solved that mystery. Nice. Painted blue. Try the workshop's working on the door. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn after all these years, but then the lock clicks. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No. It smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. This pinball says... Franco-Nigerian, the theme is horses and swords. This pinball is white to Diora, the black the back glass shows a female figure in mourning. All these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your finger across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white road woman. What's white Diora? How about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some ball? Some kind of, he looks around thinking, inane pinball theme, probably related to Messenia during the DeLorean age, the history themes are the worst. Dior was one of the three crown cities of the DeLorean era on the Mundi Isola, uh, the other being Rhea, Sylvia, and Advis, whatever. The theme, is, the theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, poor laden women. It's quite nice, actually. Lieutenant Grimace is looking at the machines. How about we fire one of these bad boys up? Sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, Kim. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. What about the other one? The Franco-Nigerian ball. Want to play that? No. How about we fire that one up? You can't fire them up. They're broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. He looks away. What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. Think. Kim Kitsuragi. Kim Kitsuragi. Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. A.K.A. Kimball. Exactly, that's what he's known he's known as. His reputation precedes him. A <laughs> You're Kim, Kim Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. Hey Kimball, what? You're Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. So now he remembers. He looks at you in the silence of the workshop, then takes his glasses off and cleans them. Fine, I'm Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. He puts them back on, aka the Kimball. You remembered. Congratulations. Wait, I still can't remember anything. Wait, but I still can't remember anything else. Wonderful. He only remembers hearing about the pinball policeman. <laughs> you don't seem to really like pinball. <laughs> no human being should. It's a game that requires no skill and a childlike affinity to flashing lights and to, fant and to fantastic science fiction and historic romance franchises. It is lame. Then why are you called pinball? I am not called pinball. It was used to taunt me a long time ago. <laughs> oh no. Before I became a homicide detective and got my lieutenancy. How did you? He puts his glasses back on. Fine. It, I was a juvenile police officer for over 15 years. It's how I started out in the RCM. Once I had to infiltrate a pinball ring. As you do when you're a juvie cop. Lame. Unbelievably, he nods. To do that, I need to become a pinball champion. I trained for nine months. The job was successful, and I was moved out of the juvenile wing to homicide. End of story. You were a juvie cop for 15 years? That time is over now. He looks at the pinball machine and breathes in. I was already a 38-year-old man. It was unbecoming. I was playing pinball. So... That's why he doesn't want to talk to Kuno. Trauma and stressor disorder from being a juvie cop. Wait, so that's why you didn't talk to Kuno. I'm going to call you Pinball now. I'm going to call you Kimball. No, don't worry. I'll keep calling you Kim. You're Lieutenant Kitsuragi to me. Wait, so that's why you didn't call it, talk to, 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 to Kuno. It's best if you handle the juvenile delinquency nods. You're Lieutenant Kitsuragi to me. Not only to you, I'm Lieutenant Kitsuragi to everyone. He nods. Now, we really need to continue our sweep of what appears to be a secret path through the whirling. And what what's like, what's the capo type for pinball? No, MB, the spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. Oh man, five real, nice. The small elevator is dimly lit by a ball that's been glowing for ages. The lattice cage is open. If I can step inside, look in. Smells of nugget and sweet. Your head brushes again, up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. Is this going to lead up to the, to the roof? The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last maintenance, 10th of Jul 10 July, 88. Look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons, monitor, descendry, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Con Eggsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long, long time ago. It says the last maintenance was in 88. That it does, Lieutenant peeks in. I say, let's brave it. Woo, 
okay. This elevator was last maintained in the in the future. 88, the elevator was maintained a long time ago. At the end of last century, he nods. Look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital, maximum five. It appears his whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. I wonder what this elevator was used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps the he taps the on the guttering light bulb it's golden in the dark close the doors and go up well we could but we're out of time so uh i guess we're just gonna have to leave this for tomorrow thank you for stopping by everybody i guess we'll have to wait till tomorrow to solve this mystery Yeah, so it leads up here to the store. Okay, cool. So could we have busted down that door and come through here the other way? That's interesting. Awesome. Okay, so we will we will continue this tomorrow. We'll go inspect the, the body or whatever. So, yep, that's it. We're out of time. We're, we're already five minutes over. Oh, there's, there's so much... There's so much stuff on the screen now with all the different ones. <laughs> Ham sandwich power move. <laughs> German surprise. <laughs> The, the the beer belly with the kick that's great oh that's so good thank you rune h oh, an, an iconic disco elysium stream moment enable a yaya you know what's fun now if if you if you cash in your coins if you cash in your coins um at any point over the next like before the 29th it's kind of like you're getting an ayaya refund and you're also using 20k on literally nothing at all at the same time so i just want to congratulate um assistant weeby specifically for spending 20k on literally nothing instead of ayaya congratulations assistant weeby for for joining that that rare few proud group i just want to say congratulations too because i just heard in the <laughs> So I'll add my congratulations on, on you know, nothing as well. <laughs> Weeby will know what this is. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> Someone's annoyed it's a dub. Starfish, she's nervous. Why does Joe's logic feel like Genie wishes? Because this is just this is just a joke that I can run into the ground forever. Because they're never ever gonna get enough enough coins to do it. So it's hilarious to me. All right, I think I think that's everything. I think I covered everything. So that's it for me, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. And um, yeah, have a good one. Hope you're still enjoying Disco Elysium. Um, it's pretty fun so far. I hope we're getting close to halfway. Oh man, I really hope we're halfway. Like I'm enjoying it, but but like damn, it's dense. Anyway, see you guys later.